All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Get Bit Podcast. Podcast for blurs, for nerds. If you have a fandom, you are certainly, always, most certainly welcome here. I host the most Will Buchanan, of course, the man to my left. You're right, depending on how your screen is flipped. I wonder what you have for introductions this today. I'm Joe Snell, and heaven is people. Oh, you know what? Well done. I, I saw that going so many different ways, but well done. I mean, we I could have also gone, I'm Joe Snell, reminding you that Shaquille O'Neal once played John Henry Irons in the movie Steel, and his whole plot development was being able to do free throws. We don't talk about Steel, no, 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 no. We don't talk about Steel. Having seven foot tall nuts along his back? Yeah. That is just, it, it, it's a movie that we wish we could forget. But before we get started, guys, much like the WWE, we are definitely um, advising language may be used and sometimes trails that might be shown that might be too intense for younger viewers. Aside from that, viewer discretion is advised. Aside from that, welcome. So, uh, chicken on hand now. We can, we, it's rubber chicken. You know, that's a TikTok. There's a TikTok rubber chicken that's doing that does music covers. Look, the uh, newest TikTok craze is squirrels in my pants from Phineas and Ferb. Yes. Although there's 104 days of summer vacation, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to start singing the song after a while. Anyway. Um, carry the platypus. But anyway, but as we get started, guys, um, we would be remiss not to start. I know I've kind of been off, so I apologize. I know Joe has been holding it down. Thank you so very much. Especially with Total Justice Gaming. I do love the cover, by the way, and the intro. Uh, Definitely check it out on our uh, on Told Justice Gaming as well as Give It Podcast. If you didn't miss that, it's out there for the world to see. But that being said, Joe, now that I'm back, I did want to ask you something, sir, because I think enough time has passed that we can finally have this discussion. Um, I did see Rainbow Bright in the in the Color Kids. It was a good '80s movie. I like how you did that. What we're talking about, guys, is Black Adam. Um, We are going to go into as far as giving our opinions of it. If you have not yet seen Black Adam, um, now would be the good time for the next few minutes to either mute us or go take care of something. We usually have a rule here on Get Bit where something if something does new does come out, we do give it at least a week. It has now been two weeks. So, with that being said, Joe, I got to ask you questions. Um, What do you think about Black Adam? Did you like it? Did you love it? It is a perfectly serviceable action film padded out by unnecessary amounts of slow-mo and lesser cyclone. Okay. Oh, I was okay. So also uh, wall abuse. Like literally the door is right there. That man does not understand the functionality of doors. I thought that was kind of I thought that was kind of funny. Um okay. So I know we don't usually nitpick because again, it's DC. It's DC Studios uh, now called DC Studios. Um, we usually don't nitpick, but if there was one thing about Black Adam that you would change if you were the director, what would you do? Or do you think that's as best as what we can do with a Black Adam movie right now? I probably changed some things with the Justice Society because. Yeah. They were, like, trying to establish that they've been there the longest, but, like, Mm -hmm. I would, honest to God, them being the Justice Society didn't make sense. I would actually change the team to JLI. Okay. This is, like, international because it makes more sense when they argue. It's like, oh, you've been doing this so long, but you ignored us. Right. They're just a society of America. The A in JSA, much like as Captain America put it, the A stands for America. They are not very much a, well, they are kind of a globe charting team, but not as much as like the uh, Justice League. Yeah. But JLI, it's in the title. No. Like, fair this point. should have been like, I don't want to say Booster Gold and Blue Beetle because that would turn this into a goofball comedy, but maybe something like if we want to get the more serious uh, Martian Mine Hunter, Captain Adam, uh, Fire and Ice. Okay. And then, like, have like them radioing in the Blue Beetle Boost to go. That way, we can at least establish them for another movie. But the argument would be: Well, you call yourselves international, but you've never come here. Which was a big part of the movie, actually. That's why I was like, you know, I'm I'm with you on that. The fact that they call themselves the JSA and not JLI, I was like, okay. Um, the only other thing, like I said, I loved uh, Mr. Hodge as 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 uh, Hawkman. 
I was I very confused it. which version he was. Was is he Thanagarian? Is he dude with strap on wings? Which version of Hawkman was he? Ah, uh, I you know what? I like, really didn't all they had to do was establish that. him. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I don't mean to interrupt. No, oh, good. Like the only thing that I that would have made sense to me is if something popped up on the view monitor in in alien language and mm -hmm. like one of the kids is like, what's that say? It's like, don't worry about it. It's something for me only. Yeah. And I get that to the point. I you know now you bring that up. I think it's kind of a hybrid. I want to say it's a hybrid, uh, hardcore that headcore that they were doing. But still, between him and Pierce Brosnan, who I still say was a great casting for Dr. Fate. Oh, yeah. No, he brought um, I mean, they definitely did make the movie. And Adam Smasher, I love the whole thing of him eating, you know. He, he was it, it was true to the character of him eating every five seconds so just to give it a little bit of comedy and cyclone itself was a nice added piece too but i just love the camaraderie between him and hawkman where it's like you know what after all this this when, once we get past this once we get past this it's me and you me and the weird you. thing was is that uh dr fake kid having sandman's powers that was a little bit different and it's like i'm wondering it's like in a draft, Sandman was a part of this, wasn't he? If he was, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love that. I still love that. I mean, overall, the movie itself was great. I think The Rock did as best of the job as he can with Black Adam as far as keeping it, as far as keeping it relative, as far as action goes. Um, I definitely have no complaints about it because he was never because for a lot of people, Black Adam kills people. He's anti-hero. Let me tell you about the tale of War World War Three. Mm -hmm. After his wife and brother-in-law were killed, right? It took the entire global sphere of superhumans to stop him, and he still killed uh, superheroes. And yet, well, they actually, only killed one problematic one, but that's beside the point. Yeah. But I mean, but overall, uh, just to overall, just to cap it, um, Black Adam, I still think it's a great movie. I think it's a it's a great start to where DC is going, um, or I should say DC Studios. But, but you're copying Marvel. Look, I'm sorry. If Marvel, I said, if you really think about it, Pepsi copy Coke, and they're still great. So let's drop the whole thing about the copying movie. Marvel when Marvel has a successful formula. So the weird thing about this to me is, is I don't even call this the DC universe mm -hmm. anymore. This is the Wallerverse. I can see that. Because Amanda Waller's in. She's in Suicide Squad. She was she's in, in Donna. both Suicide Squads, Peacemaker, mm -hmm. and this. And Donna Justice. I never saw that move, piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save you some time. She's She's at the end. She's at the um, end. The only time she appears at the end. I take that back. I saw the <laughs> Wonder Woman came, which is apparently the only good part in that movie. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, I mean, technically in a roundabout way, it's all connected because of Peacemaker making everything technically canon, including Batmite being an actual thing that uh, Batflick has to put up with. I still can't wait for season two of Peacemaker. <laughs> I, still um, I mean, you did just hear today that HBO Max canceled Westworld without it being able to end, right? <sighs> I, you know, Westworld is always Westworld. I did like the first season of it, and then seasons two through four were just eh. guys. If you want to know how Westworld ends, watch season two of The Simpsons with Itchy and Scratchy Land. Same thing, I promise. All right, that being said, guys. Uh, no, so Black Adam. Black Adam was. <laughs> now I got you on this one. Yeah, that that got me. But yeah, Black no, Adam. Black was... Adam. Black Adam's perfectly serviceable. It's it's like Venom. Don't go in for high art. You're going in for stupid rock and sock and robots looking punch out movie. I mean, I mean the best thing about it was. They did do one of the Black Adam origin twists. Yeah. Except, of course, of him killing his son to gain the power. He, the son will only gave it to him and whatnot. I honestly would have preferred if they had done the 
my best friend was uh, Pharaoh Qatar Hall. That way, it was a longer sense. friendship and and better antagonistic things. Like, I'm not the man you used to know, kind of stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong; it would make more sense. Uh, but you know, they're not like I said, not to go too much into nitpicking because again, it was still a great movie. Um, definitely, Hollywood recommend to watch it. Um, and like I said, the end scene, the end credit scene, which I, if you've which because you the rock just flat out spoils. Well, I mean, The Rock did. I mean, what do you think about it? I couldn't be mad considering the fact that, you know, DC could have solved their Henry Cavill problem by just giving him a producer credit. Oh, no, 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 no. I actually did listen to a couple things about this. Apparently, Henry Cavill is incredibly difficult to work with if you Mm -hmm. don't, if you stray from the source material so much. Which is why he was more than okay to leave The Witcher because of how they were doing things. And was also part of the, his problems with um, the Snyderverse and whatnot because he was very unhappy doing some of his Superman stuff because he's like, Clark wouldn't he's do not. this. But <laughs> I mean, isn't that the kind of dedicated person you want, though? That's why I was like, I wasn't, that's why I said I wasn't mad about The Witcher because the guy has read the books. Oh, he yeah. Has played, he has played the games. So, why, I mean, the fact that he talked about that he had to fight for certain things to be in The Witcher, which makes it great. I mean, I'm not mad about that. At the same time, I'm not mad about, you know, going at Snyder because, as we've said many times on this podcast, he is the reason why the first initial launch, the DCE, uh, the DCEU, just flat out failed. He well, is him and Hamada. And, yeah, him too, which thankfully he's gone. But... Which, I mean, Hamada was pushing towards some progressive things. Like, I would have minded a second chance at a Supergirl movie. I would have mind, minded a chance at a uh, Calvin Harris Superman movie. Uh, or any other, some of the other initiatives that he had. Mm-hmm. But let the people that know how to make a comic book movie make a comic book movie. But that's the thing. It's Hollywood. Hollywood always tries to go for the ridiculous, especially when they're horror prequels. But that's a I miss story. I miss old Hollywood. Like around the time of the monster movies, when everything was just fine and easy to go through. Oh, and it was a lot better. Uh, I'll agree with you on that. But um, but speaking of other movies, uh, guys, we do know Black Panther: Wakanda Forever um, is, as you can tell by the press releases and everything else that's being coming out. Um, the movie is coming out next week. Uh, thankfully, I have been. A, I mean, we're going to see it. Um, but we are not going to really go in deep dives on it. Uh, between me and Joe, we will give our impressions of it, which will be as spoiler-free as humanly possible. However, I would highly recommend staying off any social media because if we've learned from the from the uh, Superman uh, scene at the end of Black Adam, somehow, some way, it'll make its way into social media days before its release. But Look, I will um, spoil the movie for you right now. Get your Panther action figures. And your fish, oh. fish people action figures and bang them together a whole bunch. I was gonna say don't. That's don't. The movie. I was gonna say I was gonna say don't. I thought you were gonna tell them go look at the Lego sets. I'll tell you everything you want to know. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say go look at the Lego sets. I mean, if you really want to spoil yourselves, yes. Uh, Ryan Cooper Ooh. actually went on an interview recently mm-hmm. and uh, says like, "Yeah, Terminator Two really influenced this movie." He's like, "Oh no." And that's the case. <laughs> yeah, that is unstoppable. If Terminator 2 influenced this movie, oh dear God, there's gonna be there's gonna there's gonna be an unstoppable force that's gonna be in that movie. But oh, yeah. from, but we've already but we already gave our gut we already gave our predictions on it. Who's uh, actually I'll be gonna... seeing it next Wednesday. Uh, I got the screener tickets that uh, were passed out via uh, blah, 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 via Rick's uh, Rick's uh, comment box uh, page. Nice. I can speak. It's not been a long week where I said, God, what a week and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. You get to watch it on Wednesday. So I'm, hey, I'm more power to you. Uh, but yes, we will cover that uh, this Friday. Uh, also, some other honorable mentions. I did go back about DC Studios that DC Studios does now have, uh, instead of one head, two heads. Uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran uh, will now be the co-CEOs of DC Studios moving forward. Uh, James Gunn, if you remember, the guy who gave us Guardians of the Galaxy, the guy who gave us, uh, in my opinion, the better version of Suicide Squad, the guy who is behind Peacemaker on HBO Max, and who will be behind Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, as well as the holiday special, 
which I have to give James Gunn credit. Somehow he got Kevin Bacon in it. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. So but I yeah. saw somebody. Now, now I keep interrupting you. I'm so sorry. No, I was gonna ask you what you think about. It. That was my question. So what you think I saw it? already somebody on Facebook is like, maybe Kev, maybe James will get Scott or Zack Snyder back. It's like, no, James understands what color is, and those colors will be too bright for Zack. He's like, what are you talking about? It's like, Zach only understands colors that are gray, oh. grayer, and black. Oh. If you watch Guardians of the Galaxy, there is colors that only art students sh should be able to understand. I mean, they're not wrong, but ooh. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but no, I'm 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 excited for like I said, I I think James Gunn um is definitely the guy that really should be doing uh DC Studios moving uh, that should be uh helming DC Studios moving forward because let's be honest, you need to have a head honcho who's gonna be the who's gonna be the uh captain of the ship that's getting movies going forward. And I'll say it again, even with the MCU as it stands with its plans, DC Studios can finally get its mark and begin its cinematic universe. To where you know we can actually get quality stuff. Um, I'm hoping for it at least, but um, but yeah, like I said, I got no issues with that. I think it's great. Um, really quick, honorable mention. Um, if you're a fan of Cyberpunk 2077, um, with all its issues, I could say on Xbox and PS4, even after all the patches, um, works great on PC if you have like Steam, if you have a Steam Deck or you had your own custom rig, you can do it there, but. There is an anime that did come out for it on Netflix called Edge Runners. It's a nice 10 episode series. Um, got through watching it, loved it. I will give one word of warning, however. It is not meant for children. I know I should have to say this since Star Punk 2077 is a CD Project Red game, which actually does games like The Witcher, which again, not for children. So I feel like I have to say this because I feel like there's going to be some parent that's going to sit there and go, oh, anime, my kid can watch it. And by the end of the first episode, you're going to realize you've made a horrible, horrible decision. So, for the adults in the room, Edge Runners, recommend it. Not for kids. I repeat, not for kids. It's Unless about as were... appropriate as Chainsaw Man. Oh, also not for kids. No. <laughs> Chainsaw Man, definitely not for kids. <laughs> Although I did love Chainsaw Man, I loved. I mean, after after actually watching the first couple of episodes, I'm not mad about Denji. Denji Denji has one rule in life, and I cannot repeat it here. <laughs> I cannot repeat it here. No, but, he has, just has very simple goal. He has obtainable goals. Yes, he that has you very can reach, and sometimes squeeze. Oh boy, we are treading that line. Uh, <laughs> but yes. You're, but Joe's not wrong. But again, Chainsaw Man, great anime, not for kids. Uh, also, really quick, um, Star Girl unfortunately is a, is meeting its demise. Um, the Arrowverse, it looks like it'll finally uh, end its run on the CW with Star Girl actually being canceled after their current season. Um, Superman Lois uh, will more than likely follow, even though Superman Lois is great, Star Girl is great. We would hope that they would continue their stories on HBO Max. But since the CW has been bought by Nexstar, who has plans for the CW, and that HBO Max is a part of Warner Bros. Discovery, and they're going in a different direction, um, we may finally have to say RIP to the Arrowverse uh, once Flash wraps up its season. Um, but Joe, really quick about the Arrowverse. Uh, do you think it was a great experiment? Was it built to last, or should it have just been just limited series among all television shows? It's really hard to say because I don't think anybody actually expected it to go as broad as it did. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, certainly no one thought Legends of Tomorrow would end up with what seven six seasons. I'm surprised it got past three. <laughs> I'm surprised, surprised it got, got past one, considering the first season was such a downer. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Uh, and then they realized, it. oh, we can be a comedy show and make this just basically JLI. Well, yeah, that's really what it was. Pretty much. Um, I mean, we've had our hits, we've had our misses. Batgirl was never gonna do well. That girl uh, was black or black lightning. 
Black Lightning could have been great, but Black the Lightning story suffered wanted... the same fate as Luke Cage. You took away the wrong villain. You just gave it such a horrible story. For three seasons, you gave, and you could have had the ability to bring in Static. You had the ability to bring in Static through Black Lightning, and chose not to. That... I still don't understand what it is about the affiliation with Lightning powers and Black people in comics. Because like, I just North... don't understand that correlation. Because at first, that's the only power they actually actually. Uh, well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Electricity was not the first power. Uh, because Black Panther was the first Marvel superhero, right. and he's just basically Captain America to a degree. Yeah, because I think they gave us like Superman. I want to say the first Black Super had Superman powers. We didn't get lightning until I want to say I'm trying to remember exactly where. Well, how old is Blue Marvel? Oh, uh, a couple of decades plus. Oh, okay. Couple of decades plus has been resurgent, right? Um, but yeah, it's just I, you know, with with CW shows, you're right; they weren't really built to last. Uh, Black Lightning could have been better. Supergirl could have been way better, except you know, gave her her own villains per se. Well, Supergirl, remember, was saved from another. Uh, yeah, another saved from yes, yeah, saved from another uh, channel. So, yeah. work with what you got. Yeah, and then, yeah, like I said, The Flash, I'm sorry. The that went longer than it should have. It should have actually ended after five. Once you once once you did Reverse Flash, and you did Zoom, and you did Godspeed, what is left? I mean, let's be honest. What's left after you've hit the top echelon of your, of your Rose Gallery? Necron? Eh, I mean, it's not the same draw, but you're not wrong. Well, Neuron, because if we're just going to... Continuously steal Wally West storylines. You could do Neuron uh, stealing uh, Barry and Iris. I was like, not not Wally and his wife. Yeah, it's just, but it got, like I said, every one of these shows, like Arrow, Arrow had a great start, horrible ending. No, Arrow did not have a good start. Arrow was just Batman for a while. And I wasn't mad about that. I, I was because he's not that. Batman. Well, I mean, it's the thing about it. I mean, we I mean, this was if you well, Arrow was the first experiment. So I'm not mad about how they did it because again, every one of these shows did introduce people to the comics, and I'm thankful for that. But at the same time, they did not give Arrow the ending it should have been. The air I'm not gonna say ending, I'm gonna say it's just like it should have been a step off point to where if the series doesn't end. Because it would it would sense that his that you know that his mission was done, which we know it's not, but it could have been written better to where it's just a fall off point. That's all I'm saying. The biggest problem with Arrow is that they always reverted to status quo. Uh, something happens. Yeah. Uh, Ollie refuses to tell anybody everything. That did happen. Everybody gets mad at him for sharing secrets. By the end of the episode, Ollie learns, oh, I need to be more trusting. Mm -hmm. Everybody, please forgive me. Everybody forgive Ollie. Day saved. Next season, Ollie learns someone does something. Ollie keeps secrets. Everybody and, learns he's keeping secrets. Ollie and, apologizes. But I will say that. If her, keep going. I will say that. You know, it does. This formula does get old. It does. In the first season, okay, cool. Second season, let's move on to somebody else. I get that. But that's the reason why I think that, you know, the Arrowverse, for, for all that it was, it, it to me, it wasn't built to last. It wasn't. I think it was meant to, I think every show was meant to run for a number of seasons, and that's it. No see, there's not, there's not a show out there that's meant to run the test of time. Every year, all good things must come to an end at some point. To prove my point, it was Batman. They had to bring in Nissa Al Ghul. To make, to make sense. just a stand-in for Bruce and Talia. You're not wrong. You're not wrong about that at all. Uh, but speaking of our DC shows, uh, before we get to uh, God of War Ragnarok and the crazy promotion that they have for that, um, did you get a chance to watch the first two seasons, of, two episodes of New Titans? No, I no longer have access to HBO Max. Okay. Um, because I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, um, they introduced Mother Mayhem and Brother Blood. Neat. 
yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, for all those, I'm not. I'm just gonna just go very lightly over for those that haven't watched the new season of Titans. Um, I do like the direction they're going into, uh, and that you know, Brother Blood was already announced as the season's big bad. So there's no spoiler there. Mother Mayhem, you'll immediately recognize her the moment she comes on the screen. Um, but Titans, so like I said, doing very well. Doom Patrol will be coming out as uh, Doom Patrol will be coming out with new season as. Um, I uh, want to say either December or January. I have to go back and look. Um, but Doom Patrol is going to come out with their new season. But again, HBO Max, as far as the DC side of the world, is doing pretty well. Um, but I did want to get into God of War Ragnarok. Not because of the fact that I'm a fan. Not the fact that Joe is looking forward to this. But Joe had found a rather interesting promotion. All video games have promotions. However, I wasn't expecting this one. And... After I play this, you probably won't be expecting it either. That's a great observation, John. Bella said that you'd think it was stupid. No, I said I thought it was stupid. Okay, you know what? This is good right here. I mean, the God of War dynamic plays out in every parent-child relationship. When that clicked for me, I picked up my Leviathan axe and felt truly close to my son for the first time. I'm 17. Exactly. Leviathan acts. Ronnie, what's going on, man? You're a little quiet today. Anything to add? No. No is good. No counts. You know, Quinn was where you were at about a month ago, and uh, look at him now. Okay, last night, 2 a.m., I'm laying in bed. What am I thinking about, Kratos? Are you kidding? That's me, big time. It's, that's common for me. We believe you. Being too thirsty. Oh, I'm hydrated. Specifically, the time he tried to protect Atreus from Balder, and Atreus got so angry he shot Kratos through the chest with uh, one of those, um, like that spiky thingy. It was an arrow. Arrow, right? Spiky arrow thing. I mean, nobody can hurt you like your kids, right? LeBron. Guess so. What's going on beneath that headband? I'm not even wearing one. No, I know. You know. I mean, like if you were. When Bronny said he'd rather play against me than with me. Shot in the heart. Really? I think we call that a little breakthrough. <sighs> Some shots you just can't block. I can see that now, Ben. Hmm. Kratos. I cannot believe I must practice for this. I want all the breakthrough. Ella, why don't you ever hurt my feelings? Okay, you're old and you're bald. Just like Kratos. Now, John, last week you said you were finally ready to wear your Kratos outfit to the farmer's market. How'd that go? Incredible. I had people pointing at me going, now that's a really great dad. That's not why they were pointing. You were wearing a buckskin loincloth. Ella, it's not buck, it's bear. And I get those points all the time. People pointing, oh my God, look at that great dad. So why aren't you wearing that stuff today? Well, unfortunately, my armor bears the scars of a recent battle. He spilled a bunch of salsa on it. Hmm, that can happen, especially with the leathers. Exactly. Tattle tale. Look, if it was easy, every dad would be dressed like this, right? Does the costume really help? Uh, I don't know. Does the costume really help when you play basketball? It is a costume. Oh, I gotta stop. I have to stop it right there. Just because, number one, um, wow. Number two, yes, God of War does come out November 9th. I am looking forward to it. I cannot, as a God of War fan, I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to really mark out right now, but because it's so close, and my fiance who's watching, I love you dearly, um, but November the 9th, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to make sure you're okay. I'm going to make sure you're okay. I'm going to make sure you're fine. Um but at the same time, once you hear the beep on the PS4, I'm gonna be una I'm gonna be unavailable for a couple of hours. I'm just gonna be honest about it. Um, but Joe, uh, any thoughts, man? Well, aside from Christopher Gully saying hello and what's going on, yep, we also I have uh, spam bots from YouTube uh, letting people know of photos of my hot sister. You know. I, I got it. I'm on the block. But yes, okay, uh, shout out to shout out to Blurred's Eye View, Mr. Mr. Man on the Wall. Does he want to just come on? Huh? 
I'm going to ask him. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Um, but I do want to say hello to him. And he does say, yep, I like the direction of Titans so far. And he definitely did laugh about the Kratos thing. I laughed about it too, personally. But I just thought it was cool. But again, uh, God of War Ragnarok does come out November the 9th. I am looking forward to it. And uh, Kratos, Ben Stiller as Kratos. And here's my thing. The first time I saw it, I was like, John Travolta could pull off a of Kratos. I mean, the bald head, the beard needs to be a little bit longer. He definitely has a little bit more of a bigger build, but I'm like, he said, I could do Kratos. I'm like, you're not lying. You could actually do it. Um, but uh, but what did you, but uh, but Joe, I know, are you, you had, what's your thoughts about it, about God of War Ragnarok, looking forward to it, or just waiting for the memes to come out about the boy? Uh, I'm probably just going to watch it on YouTube for all the, uh, you know. It's doable. It's doable. <laughs> it's doable. <laughs> ah, cool. Okay. I mean, now, I can see John Travolta because every time I see that, I want to have him, when he throws the axe, uh, mutter a line from Vinnie Barbarino. I mean, it, it it could be from get. It could also be. It also could be from get from a get shorty or be cool. You could always go with one of those lines. Uh, um, you know. Um. As for the actual game, uh, when I'll get a chance to play it, I don't know. I already got two other games I'm dealing with plus Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, you got. You got Pokemon will come out like a week after that, along with Cardfight Vanguard Dear Days. Despite the fact that the the game card game is a seventy dollar card game without the paid DLC, which is a giant controversy. Yeah, I mean it's fair point, but but yeah, again, I have to apologize to my fiance because yeah, come five days from now, I'm going to be there, but I'm not going to be there. But anyway, uh, moving right along, guys, I did want to cover this as well because Deadpool has asked us for something, and it's not he, did, for the fact he does get it. He he does get it. He does get it. Oh wow! So uh, look up Midnight Sun season pass. Oh well, I've got the. I was going to pull up the trailer. So oh no, name? pull up that trailer while you're looking up the season pass trailer. All right. So yes, Deadpool did actually have a uh, wonderful thing to ask of us, um, aside from his usual craziness. But oh, so hold on, pref- we got to preface this. This is not Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. This is Nolan North Deadpool from the Deadpool video game. Very true. But here you go. Hey everybody, it's the Merc with a Mouth, back with another video. If you need a refresher, we talked about how I want in on this fancy schmancy new team. But some of you thought my asking for support was an invitation to suggest heroes other than Deadpool. Many of you were very vocal. The hell is a Moon Knight? Get it, we all have our favorites. Yours is whoever Frank Drake is, and mine is Deadpool. But I say the internet could do something good for once by talking me up to the powers that be. Hashtag Deadpool Sons. Oh, and check out my artisanal handcrafted costume. Like and subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, man. Um, so, yes, uh, while I get that up, Joe, would you explain uh, what Midnight Suns is doing with Deadpool? Oh, yeah. No, so the uh, Midnight Suns video game, which is coming out in December, finally, uh, they announced their DLC, Deadpool. Uh, this is just them announcing what their DLC uh, is going to be. I believe it's Storm, Venom, Deadpool, and I forget the fourth character, but uh, they're just coming as DLC playable characters. Venom is already in the game via story reasons, but he's not playable. So by the DLC, he will be playable on your team. I don't even know if I'm going to use him. I'm pretty sure my team's going to stay the same the whole game. I figured you were going to stay with Magic. What? Magic? Uh, Magic, Spider-Man, Nico, and somebody. I forgot about Nico. I kind of figured you were going to go with that one. Um, but yeah, you're right. I was trying to pull it up, but right now my internet is just not being very helpful. But yes, that is exactly what the DLC is for Deadpool because he can't do no wrong. I'm still, I cannot wait for the last, well, the next Deadpool movie because we're finally going to get what we want. But again, Midnight Suns, as Joe said, um, will be coming out December to, uh, December the 2nd. I am looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to Joe's uh, review of Midnight Suns because he will definitely be following that. 
Um, but yeah, it's just going to be very, very interesting. Um, but speaking of things that are interesting, I know, guys, we're kind of going back a lot. We're trying to cover a lot of information. Um, since we're staying with Marvel, I did want to Here add... Say what? Here it is. Oh, you got it? Okay. Right, it's red. Cool, because I was going to go ahead and bring that up as soon as the system it's always funny whenever we do whenever i decide to do something that's when my system goes yeah no <laughs> oh that looks like the same thing joe we did it fam turns out yeah oh never mind it's the pass reveal it's the okay gotcha gotcha covered bullying corporations on the internet works says so right here in this acceptance email we cordially invite you to be part of the team that legally cannot be named yes looks like i'm on the wait a hot minute teammates okay so it's a group thing that's cool i guess we've got a symbiotic tongue that's barely safe for work dr mormon time the muted meteorologist! And finally, little old moi. I know, I know. You haven't seen me in a video game in years. Just keep it in your pants until you hear the safe word. <laughs> Venom still just looks off. I mean, I, I mean don't get me wrong. Venom, I guess, because they're trying to keep up with the skins, but that definitely does look a little bit weird. But he looks more like Sleeper than he does Venom. Yeah, it's just it's it's just it's like a shiny. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that one alone. But yeah, with that being said, uh, again, there is some other news. Again, I'm sorry, guys, my internet's just a little bit off. But um, Vision, or I should say, Paul Bettany, uh, will be getting his own show on Disney Plus, and the 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 title of it. Joe, you got to help me because I can't say it with a straight face. I don't know what's so hard about it. Vision Quest is one of the major storylines for him. It's just Vision Quest? No, that was a major type, major storyline for him. Yes, but the show is called Vision Quest. And? I cannot say that with a straight face. <laughs> it's not like he's going to have a coyote done by what's his name? That one singer. Well, true, but um, but yes. Uh, aside from aside from me and my inability to say certain titles without laughing, um, Paul Bettany will be returning as Vision uh, in his own limited series uh, in the MCU with Scarlet Witch making appearances as well. Um, also, uh, I'm trying to think what other oh, um, what's her face? I should actually have that pulled up as well. Will be joining Agatha's Coven of Chaos, playing a new Marvel villain, and I forgot her name to save my life right now. Um, that's you know makes me sad. We are this far into Marvel. We've had this many Thors. We have now witches and in stuff like this, and we still don't have Enchantress. Do we really need Enchantress at this point? I mean, Enchantress would make more sense here more than anything. Aubrey way, Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Thank you, Chris. Aubrey Plaza. Okay. <laughs> just yes, pull he... him into the into the podcast already. Well, we just can't just yank people in. We're not the mafia. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are. We just can't yank people in. <laughs> Let me see. I'll I'll reach out to him. But anyway, uh, as I'm waiting to see him, I'll I'll reach out to him and see if he can join us. He may actually be busy. That's the reason I don't want to just jump and say, "Hey, want to join us?" But anyway, uh. With that being said, guys, we are covering a lot of information that we kind of missed. So I did want to get Joe's idea because as we are approaching the next part of the MCU, um, we would be remiss that we did not cover Ant-Man's uh, newest trailer, Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're at X-Con. How are you an Avenger? That doesn't make sense. But everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. People still need help, Dad. That's why we made this. It's like a satellite for deep space, but Quanta. Wait, wait a minute. You're sending a signal down to the quantum realm. Turn it off. 
now. afraid of there's something I never told you this place it isn't what you think oh, I find give you more time if you help me so what's it gonna be Batman All right, so that was Ant-Man, The Wasp, Quantumania. And also, before we go into that, let me apologize. I am so sorry, Kelly. I did not see your comments. I wouldn't mind them going more in-depth with Hawkman. Yeah, I can see that. Um, he seemed super intense like the other Hawkman. Yeah, he did. So, again, apologies, guys. I was trying to catch up on stuff over here. So, I'm trying to go back. If any of the comments were missed, I will definitely go back and highlight them. But, again... My apologies. That being said, Joe, uh, what do you think impressions of Ant Man and Quantum uh, Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Mania? Well, I like that we already get the reveal that Stature is going to be in the movie. Yeah. Um, uh, Jonathan Majors is going to have a whole bunch of fun next year and so many different things. Man, he is he's about to have a he is about to have a year, especially with the next trailer, especially another trailer that we'll have coming up very soon. Yep. But yes, he's gonna definitely have uh he is definitely gonna have a hell of a year. I have no idea what Bill Murray's doing in this movie, but I'm there for it. It's Bill Murray. As long as uh, not kidding, Chris also uh, says he's free, pull him in. Oh, oh damn, that was fast. <laughs> All right, uh, give me a second, but keep talking, Joe. Uh, I can't yeah. do it so, I mean, the other thing is uh, we see that uh, a lot of Kang's <laughs> architecture kind of looks like uh, what Simu Lu has on his wrists. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised, though. It would be fun. No, I'm very am certain is that the uh, Ten Rings are just, quant or just rings from the quantum realm made a uh, normal size. So we're going six degrees of Kevin Bacon? No, that's Guardians of the Galaxy. We're not there yet. But somehow I feel like we will be. <laughs> Maybe. I so somehow how many Guardians die at the end of it. I was like, I somehow feel like I saw so, I'm not gonna lie, I somehow feel like we are gonna eventually get there. That's just that's just me about that, but I could be wrong. But I just feel like we're heading that route. Um I'm not mad about that at all. The fact that we are experiencing the quantum realm, also known as the microverse, I'm not mad about that at all. Uh, aside from that, it's just the whole idea of how they're bringing Kang into the universe. Uh, but just give me a second as I'm trying to. I mean, to that's this. a variant of Kang. That is the quantum realm variant. So that is the conqueror of Kang. Yeah. So I mean, it is. It is. Where I mean, well, I mean, it, it is he who remains. So we really should. Yeah, be I mean, well, about I mean, that. they've also confirmed that. Um, at least I think it was confirmed that uh, Fantastic Four's villain will not be Doctor Doom. It will be the King variant Brahma Tut. Yeah. So you know, so, so we're going to be seeing Jonathan Majors a bunch <laughs> soon. Oh yeah, that man's going to be the highest paid Marvel actor for. So many different royalties. I wonder what he's what his like deal is. Oh, he's oh he's definitely gonna be commanding a lot. He is definitely gonna be commanding a lot. 
Um, but I guess we might as well go into the other, we might as well go into the next trailer because again, he is playing Kane the Conqueror, and surprisingly enough, he's, he's not playing Kane the Boxer. He yeah, but it's like it, well, let me play the bit, let me play the trailer before I talk about it. Here's Creed 3. I spent the last seven years of my life living out my wildest dreams. Bianca, Rocky, my dad. This is built on their shoulders. Hey, my man, can I help you? Let me get an autograph. Nah, I ain't signing an autograph. So get off my car. You don't remember me, huh? Amy. How long were you locked up? 18 years, bro. Just got out last week. Glad to have you back out, huh? I know I've been away a long time, but kept myself in shape. I still got gas in the tank. Come by the gym. Thank you. Curious what happened with you two? I didn't tell you. We was like brothers. I was the best, though. But I never got a chance to prove that. That's cute. I know what you're doing, Donnie. You don't owe this to nothing. Damien's fighting the world. He's trying to hurt people. I vouch for you. You think you mad? Try spending half your life in a cell. Why can somebody else live your life? I'm coming for everything. You threatening me? Something is going on with you. Damien was like family. Now oh, we pass talking. Then maybe you just have to fight him. Do what I gotta do. Some of my methods, you might disagree with me. These are family ties. I recognize mine. I know that they needed me. Traumatic stress, watch it manifest. Got my only fear. I ain't scared of death. Did you hear me yet? I ain't scared of death. Did you hear me yet? What you gonna do? Threaten to take my breath. I need you to take all your fear. Take all the guilt. Let go of whatever was and walk into what is. I feel those chains are breaking, yeah. I fear God, I don't fear death. I see no stress and take a step. And that was actually Creed 3. And of course, uh, we do have with us uh, the man on the wall, the man in black. Literally What's going blurred. on, people? It's the man up north, the man on the wall, Chris Fury from Blurred's Eye View. What's going on, everybody? What's up? Hey, what's going on, Chris? I, I, I hate. I, for, I don't. I don't. I hate. To, I hate to have my voice like thundering through like it does. But I'm saying this right now for this trailer. <laughs> if Damien, the person who taught Damien how to box in prison, is not Clubber Lane, we're gonna be mad. We gonna be. We riot. <laughs> so, it better so, be Mr. I, I'm, I'm looking exactly like he always does, just sitting in prison teaching this pissed. man how to box. What are you gonna say, Chris? I, I said, Yeah, it's Clever Lang sitting in prison, pissed. I will also, also, Jonathan Majors and Aldous Hodge are becoming like the go to guys now, like they're everywhere, like they're yeah. starting to pop up. Every and this is a good thing, I love this, I love this. Uh, like within the same month, Aldis Hodge was Hawkman mm -hmm. and the voice of John Stewart Green Lantern. Yeah. And Leverage is coming yeah. back. Yeah. Let's streaming. leave that John Stewart stuff alone. <laughs> it's always John Stewart over but, here, baby. But I always but, yeah, I but let's leverage. put him in I a will... good move Green Lantern movie. Oh no, it was an animation. He was the, the voice of where, where my power. I liked it. Yeah. I like yeah. where my power. None of that movie was John Stewart, though. Well, I mean, the story wasn't. No, the story was. I'll give you that. The story definitely wasn't John Stewart. No, I like don't... these two guys are like becoming the Denzel Washingtons, and we'll go with uh, what's a good analogy? Because I don't want to say Cuban Gooding Jr. Oh no, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't want to say Terrence Howard. Okay, here we go. They are the <laughs> new Denzel and Don Cheadle. Okay, very fair, nice. That's fair. I didn't want to say Cuban Gooding Jr. or Terrence Howard. <laughs> Terrence, what are we going to do about Iron Man, man? <laughs> Not show up. 
<laughs> it's like next time last online 18 years, yeah, like, ago. years ago right oh, oh it, it still hurts it's like Don Cheeto said in Iron Man 2 I'm here deal with it Do don't it. worry about it <laughs> But since, but but since you're here, Chris, I uh, just want to recap real quick. Cause you seen Black Adam? Uh, what did you think, sir? Uh, it was everything I needed it to be. It was okay. everything I needed it to be. Uh, people who are looking for it to be like the end game, like Marvel, and like, look, we're talking about Black Adam. Adam Tef. Yeah. This is not a, a a character building process at this point. No. Like, right? He's here. He's here to kick ass and not even worry about taking names later. He's here to handle business and mm-hmm. keep it moving. And that's what I got from this movie. That's what I needed from this movie, mm-hmm. and that just made me happier. I I went in. I went in. I went into the film eyes wide open. You know, I said, you know, DC. We all know DC movies have been. It's been a lot of uh, misses lately, mm-hmm. but this one, you know. I'm like, okay, you did your job. And then your reveal at the end really did your job, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he, he cleaned house, literally in figures. He, he did clean house. <laughs> he cleaned house. I'm I mean, like, the rock, the rock did what WB couldn't do. <laughs> uh, nearly get a rated R uh, for a WB for a movie. That, on top of that, and bring back Superman. I'm like, how do you do that all in the same week? You know? so, I just realized why they used the JSA as opposed to the JLI is because he was in most of his storylines come from the JSA, the 1990s and early yeah, yeah, odds yeah, yeah, JSA yeah. comic. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and you sense, know what? But... I can go for. I can definitely go for more Hawkman. Mm-hmm. I can definitely I go for more. I just want to know which Hawkman he is. That's the question. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the question. Because I said it was. I say it was a hybrid. To me, it was like a hybrid of two different ca- of two different Hawkman. Oh, you just don't want which is, which is which is normal for a lot of a lot of these type of films now. Yeah, which again, yeah, that's I'm not normal. mad about. Yeah, I'm not yeah, mad about that. Because let, let's face it, Hawkman has a very convoluted history anyway. So it's like I, you, 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 you try to explain it. It's just like it just gets into a bundle. So you're just like right, hmm. right, right. <laughs> I would have liked him to job. acknowledge that he was a pharaoh during that time mm-hmm. and that his he his people were help, trying to help conduct. That way you yeah. have that and more antagonistic it's like we we I tried to help at one point. It wasn't enough. You know what? And you're right, Joe. You're right, Joe. If they had mentioned something, like if Black Adam mentioned something about I remember you or something to that effect and you did nothing, you know, and that's why they keep button heads. But it was a misunderstanding. That that would have added a little it would have been something because he didn't, yeah, because then you really like people who are just like general the general audience, I should say, who are just coming into it. It just was like two guys just button heads for no reason because they're the same person, basically. I'm the guy who you call in to hit things really hard. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the only difference between Carter Hall and Black Adam in this movie is Carter Hall knows how to use a door. (laughs) Well, Black Black Adam, to his defense, was like, yes, we have doors. But (laughs) he's like, I'm still going to do what I want. My favorite part of that movie. (laughs) But why? It was was like, like, but why? In the movie. I was when uh, the Genesee was talking to them, uh, talking to the mom, and they hung on that doorway yeah. for the longest time. It's like he's just gonna bust to the wall beside it. We all know it. <laughs> but it's still, it's still funny though. But, but I had to get your question on this. But I did want your opinion on this as well, since we are speaking of movies. Um, I know Hollywood has had this issue of movies and trying to go back. I mean, Halloween Ends is a prime example of. Letting something stay dead, but in this case, this is revolving around Godzilla. What I mean by that is that there will be a sequel. Um, this is actually posted on Twitter with a release date of November 3rd of 2023, saying that there will be another Godzilla movie. Um, there isn't a lot of information on what the sequel will be, unless Joe, you got something. Wait, isn't there also supposed to be the Kong Godzilla movie 2 next year as well? Supposedly, yes. Not confirmed. Yeah. Huh. There's 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 the Godzilla sequel. Uh-huh. There's the uh Monsterverse uh uh series that they're working on. Uh-huh. And then there's the Godzilla uh another Godzilla film that they're releasing overseas. Yes. Yeah. So you, you, you got a lot. You got a lot of giant lizards running around. 
Yeah, there's Godzilla's becoming of... like he's like the Wolverine of their universe. <laughs> like he's just showing up everywhere that. all of a sudden. I still say it did Kong wrong though. Kong had Kong had the axe and was literally beating the brakes off Godzilla, and Godzilla got plot armor. Yeah, so but know. Godzilla also gave the look of child to sit down. I got this. You don't understand. I've been here before now. <laughs> That's how he do it. That's how he had it. <laughs> He did kind of get that roast five dollar having ass down, and I got this. You know, I thought <laughs> you ain't wrong. I mean, he did kind of get the Nino Brown look like Central <laughs> Park make change. I will break <laughs> out my slipper if you do not sit your butt down. <laughs> oh, so man. yeah, they, they they have like three different things, and and I guess one of the issues is because there's so much access to the internet mm-hmm. that we get so much behind the scenes stuff you know 15 20 years ago you didn't really get a lot of this stuff you got bits and pieces and blurry blurred images and i can sum this up real easy chris 15 (laughs) 20 years ago we got news that a new godzilla movie was coming out and then we learned it was a giant iguana with matthew broderick yeah yeah and then we learned that and then they they made a cartoon like a year later (laughs) which was very good yeah, oh, I, I and you know what? I, that the movie itself is not bad. It's just the name that's attached to it. It's like, well, no. <laughs> I almost want to not to steal from, your, not to steal from your thunder, Chris, but I was about to go into that list of movies that should never be talked about again. <laughs> I was, gonna, I was gonna say, you know what? I wish I can go back. I wish I can go back two weeks and go. Uh, honorable mention: Godzilla. Uh, what was that 1999 2000? 98? Yeah, 97, 98. Yeah, it was like 97, 98. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like of all movies that should never be attempted again, at least on this side of the coast, that was one of them. Because well, I mean, it was, it was, a, it, was it was great to look at. It was just like this isn't God. You didn't have to change his look, his image at all. At all. You, you could have just went with a totally different direction. You... <sighs> it, it is, that That's what we're talking about. Hollywood just kind of just Hollywood kind of gave up in a way. Yeah. I mean, like, they really you, there's, you, there's changes you don't have to make to make a movie work. You don't need to do that. Not you at know, all. A lot of time, you know, they say, oh, OK, perfect example with Ant-Man. There were some people upset that it wasn't Hank Pym. I said, you've got to understand, it's a new generation, and there's more than one Ant-Man anyway. Exactly. So it made sense to go with Scott and have mentioned and introducing Hank Pym and backstories and whatever. It made sense. They didn't change the look. Right. (laughs) But now you say, we're going to do Godzilla. I'm fine. Yeah, like, we're going to do Godzilla. You're like, okay, cool. Who doesn't like Godzilla? But he looks like this sleep Acura legend type lizard, you know, he's like real sleek and Lexus. He's like a sleek that, Lexus. Yeah, you don't have to change anything. But it's almost like we said that you know when it, like y'all guys talking about just how things are updating and changing for new generations. Um, just like the other story I was going to bring up, you know, that right now. Um, and forgive me if you ever watch this podcast, sir. Just know I loved you as Black Manta um, in Aquaman. Right. Please, yeah, yeah. please come back. Um, hopefully, you will be back. For a black man, I'm, I'm sure he will. I'm great. sure he will. I'm sure. Uh, will. But if I mispronounce your name, sir, a thousand apologies. Uh, yacht, I have looked this up. And Just I've pull it up, and I can so probably pronounce it. it. It's, it's Yaya. I, I know it's, it's, it's Yaya. Yaya. Oh, Yaya. Okay, Yaya Abdul Mateen. Um, because That's right it. now, as of right now, it hasn't been confirmed um, that he is going to be Wonder Man, but he is in talks to play Wonder Man in the MCU, and. <sighs> I think it's great, but if you like, I don't me, think it's the one. I don't think it's the Wonder Man where they're thinking because he's he right. has another form. Yes, and he does. Is, he has another form, so I think it's well, going to be more another of the, form confirmed in the MCU already because yeah of the yeah. poster in Guardians of the Galaxy One. Simon, whatever his name, mm-hmm. is actually supposed to be uh, what's his name? Mal. Nathan Fillion. Yeah, Nathan, Nathan Fillion. 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 I'm bad with names today. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but what's so crazy about it because like me, I stay on as as Joe calls it the, the worst places to be on Twitter. So I stay on Twitter most of the time. 
He chooses and violence, people. Don't pay attention to him. I I, I go to where I, I go to the dark places. I'll admit that. Pause. <laughs> that being said, um, Twitter has literally, for the most part, lost its mind. And I mean, I've never understood the whole idea. It's like, oh, well, you know, there's other people that can play. There's other people that can play Wonder Man. And they go down this entire listing. And I'm just like, can we give the brother a chance first? So I do have one question. What's that? Why is he going to be Wonder Man when he can just be Blue Marvel? Because they have somebody else in mind for Blue Marvel. And yeah. I think that deal is, I think they're still trying to rope him into it. I think, I think if it's what I, I think, think it is. I, I Denzel would be a good one, but mm -hmm. I think there are two other people. Like, I, at first, I was gonna say Jean Carlo Esposito, but he's more than likely gonna be Professor X. Yeah, he's more than likely gonna be. I mean, the it's, guy he's there. he's he wants to play. He yeah, wants to I be mean, in the MCU. Period. He he's like, I'll play Doom, and I'm just like, look, just because it's John Giancarlo Esposito, I will take it because, dude, you can act your ass off. I mean, so you're not you're not gonna tell you're not gonna tell the guy from Hermanos Polos Locos no. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can tell the guy from Far Cry Six no. It didn't like, matter. Like, yeah, uh, him like, being Far Cry Six didn't help the case. <laughs> well, I mean, true, but at the same time, it's just I I like the fact that you know, like I said, if they do get Denzel, which that's a tall order to get a man of that caliber, because immediately if I if I'm playing casting director. And you have Denzel, you have, um, well, I was going to say Don Cheadle, but he's already a part of the MCU. Uh, there's another actor who and you never know because good. up until you never know until up until Equalizer 2, he had never done a sequel and he's working on the third one now. Yeah. So right now I was like, you never know. I was going to say Lawrence never... Fishburne, but I keep forgetting he's Goliath. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. he's Lawrence Fishburne is Goliath, so we can't. And I still want to. I still want to see that backstory. I still want to see that backstory. I still think we can. I still want to see the backstory of Black Goliath, but <laughs> but yeah, but to see Denzel's Blue Marvel, that would be the icing on the cake because he does kind of have that gravitas, and at the same time, to actually see him as one of the Ultimates, mm -hmm. I I'd be all for it, but. It just amazes me that, you know, some people are like, oh, well, we could have had Nathan Fillion. Really? I still want Nathan Fillion as Drake in the Uncharted series. He's, It'll he never has happen. to be Grandpa Drake at this point. Yes. Or Uncharted he's, he's 40, 40, 40, Drake. He's early 40s. He's, he's still in his early 40s. He, yeah, he's getting up there. But it's just <laughs> um, but it's just that, you know, I let that dream. I didn't let that dream go. It's like I still want Firefly to come back. But well, Fox, they still got the they still got the fan film that he made. So, yeah. And don't Which, wrong, yeah, by the way, is amazing. It's amazing. Yes, the Uncharted, the <laughs> Uncharted fan film with Nathan Fillion is definitely great. And if you're like me, you're a Firefly fan. You're like, I still want, I still As want to pass out of gas. But yeah, so a joke. He's fifty-one. Okay, well, still, I mean, Don Cheadle's pushing sixty. So, I mean, there's there's still guys in there that can still do it. But, but no, it just when it comes to the MCU, I do want to see certain. I do want to see certain our actors and guys. If you're actually watching this on YouTube and Twitch, I still want to know what you guys are thinking as well. Um, just you know, Blue Marvel is bound to show. The X Men are bound to show. Fantastic Four, if they keep John Krasinski, um, because yes, it was a multiverse, but Krasinski needs to stay as Mister Fantastic. I think that is perfect. There's His nothing wife wants change. him to do it. Yeah, His own like, wife wants him to do it. I mean, you, you can't really say anything if the wife wants you to do it. I should know. I'm halfway down the road as it is. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would get in so much trouble for that. But, uh, <laughs> but well, I, I, I'll speak for myself. I, I stay in trouble. <laughs> We're just going to be on the screen chat couch. Yeah, yeah, you, you're, you're, Joe. You're probably the safest person <laughs> in the group right now. But My wife just gives me the eyes. I don't know about that. Her kung fu is so much better than mine. <laughs> Look, but, I'm, but no, it's yeah, just, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the stage in my relationship when I mentioned Angela Bassett. My wife was like, "I know it's my only competition." I'm like, "Don't don't feel bad." I say Jill Scott. <laughs> I say Jill Scott, and I get the evil eye. So you're not the only you're not the only one, Chris. Trust me. We all get just we like, all get those evil eyes at us. <laughs> but uh, but no, I just but again with MCU, I still think that's going to be great. Uh. Did want to go very quickly um, into a few more trailers. 
uh, that we have. I was just trying to make sure I covered almost everything from my side because Joe has seen Slam Dunk. Now, I have made myself a list of animes that I was going to eventually go over. I'm currently watching Food Wars. I finally caught up with One Piece, so shout out to Hellspawn Cosplay. I'm right there with you. <laughs> me and him were... guys, I will let you know how the One Piece movie was because I'm going to go see it tomorrow. You okay. Lo- okay. I'm on 461 right now, house. so it's you know. My <laughs> I'm still like, what, uh, 500 episodes behind. But oh, I was, I was, <laughs> oh, my dumb tail started at 200, uh, 250, no, that's wrong, 235, and that was five months ago. And I was so, like trying to knock out shows on almost a six hour basis. What do you say, Joe? So for me, I uh, they just invaded Onigashima, and I'm mm-hmm. just gonna wait till they finish out the arc and the anime. Then gotcha. I'll get caught back up. Like I know what's going on because I read the manga, mm-hmm. but I'm just waiting to like sit down and just watch a giant fight sequence with the gorgeous animation. I know which episodes I'm talking about too. Oh, the animation once you get to 900 is. Oh yeah, Ooh. well I mean like ten seventeen, the fight between Zoro and someone, and then mm-hmm. the Luffy Kaido fight has like uh, God tier animation because they got the big they got the big guns for those episodes. Gotcha. Although, really quickly before we go into the slam dunk trailer, uh, Chris, Joe, have y'all guys saw any episodes of the Bleach Thousand Year War yet? Oh yeah. No, I have. It. I have it. Then I I'm have not going to see. I have it. I have it queued. I am not gonna say spit. Never mind. I'm I, not gonna I, say I, spit. I have it queued because it's right behind uh, uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. So I have so, it queued. I also week, cannot talk about that. God dang it! So <laughs> this week's that. episode of Witch of Mercury. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, are you watching Witch of Mercury? Sorry, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, not that. No, nope. I got. Oh, I you have. Need to watch the new. This Gundam. is what's the on my. Gundam this is on my. This is yeah. I know. I've seen one episode. So okay, I, I'm like, so okay. you've seen the disrespectful Mark. fights. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm like, mm, Mark, another one on the list. <laughs> Have you seen? Damn it. Okay. So you haven't seen Cho- uh, Choo Choo uh, Hands being ready to eat for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I can imagine. There's, there's, there's some, the anime train for me, because my son is the big, he's the big, like I'm a big comic and TV and movie mm-hmm. buff, sliding back into anime. Yeah, he's always been the anime buff. He's also he puts me on to certain. He put me on my hero. So it oh. was like he's like, Dad, you got to check it out. Cool, I watch it. You know, I he put me on the yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah, he put me on Game of Thrones. He was like, because I was just like, mm. but by second season, he was like, Dad, there's dragons. I'm like, I'm sold. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> So after that, he was just like, but before you knew it, I was caught up with him. And he was like, wait. And I'm like, yeah. So uh, a lot of the anime pieces, like, he'll check out a lot of them. Um, Mm -hmm. He's like, and I can understand why, because I've seen, I've seen some live action transferred animes that don't go over well. They they just don't. You know, (laughs) and and for several reasons, because I've seen I've seen movies done overseas. Like I still, I have a, a Full Metal Alchemist, Alchemist on my list for the live action that they don't have. Don't do it. Don't See, do it. I was wondering. Okay, is I, that I, I, got, anime, I got mixed feelings about that. Anime ahead, adaptations though. that you can do. Bleach, not that bad. Mm, it yeah, covered yeah. up to when Biakia and Renji first appeared. Okay. Mm-hmm. All the Kenshins, absolute must. Oh, that, that those are fire. Those all yeah. those are fire. Ashida no Joe, absolute must. Mm-hmm. Um, what the hell do you guys call it in America? Oh, Ace Attorney adaptation. Okay, absolute okay. must. Mm-hmm. It is a very accurate representation of the ser- of the games. Yeah, so, you, so a lot of the, a lot of the... weird, but then they also keep forgetting just how weird that series is. Very. Oh. Very you're talking weird. to somebody who watched you talking to someone who watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Come on. JoJo is weird on purpose. JoJo is just, weird you know, on purpose. Whoever came up with JoJo's Bizarre JoJo's Bizarre Adventures was like, let me see how much more I can take in each episode. That's what that <laughs> was. That was a challenge, is what that series when is. When I first got into it, I'm like, what? Now my son watched Bobo 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 Bobo. 
I didn't. Uh, I couldn't do that one. I I couldn't do that one. I was just like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> you I, know that I, SpongeBob. I, you know that SpongeBob yeah, yeah. when he's getting off the chair. I'm like, yeah, I'm out. I, I'm out. I'm a head out. I'm a head out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm a head out. But uh, but JoJo, I noticed. I noticed in JoJo's Bizarre, like when it first when you first watch it, you're just like, it was all about Harmon, Harmon, yeah. Harmon. By second season, they completely abandoned it. And went a totally different direction. Yeah, season three. They went a totally different direction. And then I'm like, what happened to all this hormone talk? And it, like now with stands. It's all stands. What they say is the stands are the physical representations of Haman. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. But because when you read about when Jonathan, you read about it. Yeah, because Jonathan's say, stand is supposed to be the world because Dio has mm-hmm. Jonathan's mm-hmm. body. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But when you was reading about it, like the reason why they switched is because they didn't know what direction they wanted to take. It. Well, they also yeah, assumed he didn't want to be st- pigeonholed into vampires for so long. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, so, I mean, the first one was vampires. The second chapter was super vampires. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, you know what? This is, one, but this is what caught vampires? My, yeah, but this is what caught my attention because my son actually started watching JoJo years ago. Uh-huh. What caught my attention was I'm walking in the living room one day and I'm, I'm literally going to the kitchen and Jodeci is playing. And I'm like, I knew he was watching the anime. And I'm like, what show are you watching that's playing Jodeci? <laughs> and know. he told me. And after that, I was like, he was oh. like, well, it's, the, it's the ending song. And I'm like, yeah, I need, I just need to know now because it's like, the curiosity who chose Jodeci? The curiosity pulled you straight in like, okay. Right. Because yeah, it was one of those things, it was one of those things like, yeah, I'm going to get a bottle of water. What must I say? <laughs> what are you watching? Well, the cartoon? It was, it was like, it's the same show. But we got to make sure Chris understands that some things are just unforgivable. <laughs> oh, God. Well, the reason, well, <laughs> before, we, before we went down the anime hole, which I love going down the rabbit hole. Um, but yes, The Witch from Mercury, you definitely got to watch that because uh, really quickly, I am going to also invite you. I'm trying to put together a panel of individuals and sometime within the next few months or so, I just have to get everybody's schedules together. We are mm-hmm. going to have a judging contest on this year's top 10 most disrespectful ass whoopings. Is this all around general in, in geek culture? It's going it's gonna to it's gonna have three. It's going to have three categories. It can either be in movies, anime, or um, movies, anime, or manga. That's the three categories. Does this does this include a U.S. agent getting the most disrespectful ass whooping of the? That's number one. Because (laughs) because (laughs) it's for a while. Because I've I mean I still said for the longest time that the most disrespectful ass whooping was Walker getting his ass handed to him by the door Melage, and then I thought about it. It was well deserved. But then I thought about it, I was like, everybody has that go-to disrespectful ass whooping. So I was like, we have to put a panel of judges together. Everybody brings their submission, and we're going to rank them from 1 to 10 and actually have an official ranking of disrespectful ass whoopings. So have you ever seen the meme? Have you ever seen the meme when a dude is eating popcorn and he just kind of leans back like he's getting ready to watch somebody it's that yeah. mean. Every time I mention John Walker, I'm like, "Oh, eat the popcorn." Yeah, popcorn. it's pretty. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, but that's that's something that's gonna be down the pipe. I'm trying to get everybody on the same page to where we can all do it, and I'll get over. I'll go over rules and submissions because everybody will have one submission. And just to make it fair, I can't use John Walker. I'll have to find something else because I. Okay. <laughs> So by ruling alone, I have to find something else, and I know Joe's got plenty on his side. But is this like know, angel perfect. fighting puppet? Is this like Spike fighting angel? Puppet oh God, angel? no! I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna Miku Man stuff. He's probably gonna. He's probably gonna find some. He's probably gonna find something along the uh, uh, smile time. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> oh no! I'll go Vegeta versus the that's, just, like that. that's just the funniest oh. episode. I swear to God. Oh man! <laughs> but yes, but but definitely keep down the back burner. I'm, I'm definitely trying to get that together for everybody involved. But I did want to cover this anime because Slam Dunk, Joe has seen it. I haven't. It's on my list. 
and they actually have a new trailer that I'm I watched it before the show started, but I still want everybody's opinions on it. Okay, so that was Slam Dunk, and every time I see that, I'm reminded of Double Dribble. I don't know why, but for the NES version, Double Dribble pops into my head, and I'm like, okay. Um, but that's actually the oh. Slam Dunk movie. That'll actually be December 3rd um, in Japan, December 3rd, so how usually most movies go. Um, December 3rd in Japan, which means it might be a while for it hits the States, or if you get lucky, you'll find a... Uh, a theater that may or may not have an English subtitle. Um, but Joe, uh, do you mind explaining Slam Dunk real quick? Because I know you follow the series. I have oh, yet yeah. to watch now, it. So the whole premise is the redheaded guy, Hanamichi Sakuragi, uh, enters high school after striking out by asking out 100 girls in middle school. Damn. And his only reason for joining basketball is because he follows a, finds a cute girl who is like, hey, you're really tall. Why don't you play basketball? So he immediately fakes out. He's like, oh, I play basketball all the time. I'm great. I'm fantastic. And then gets immediately called out on it. And uh, it turns out, like, his the girl, like, likes him just fine, mm -hmm. but only has eyes for one other dude who is just like, I don't have time for you. I don't even know your name. I couldn't care less about you. I'm here to play basketball and become a, become a professional. <laughs> So, so just like a one-sided uh, love triangle, which then just evolves into him being uh, basically the Dennis Rodman of rebounds. Okay. It's where, well, like, he, he can't shoot for crap. He does nothing but talk shit the whole time on the court, uh, but doesn't know the principal basics of basketball, but gets a slam dunk. And then just like over the course of the series, because the episode series is like 75 episodes. So he's the Yusuke of basketball? <laughs> Yusuke may be not the definitive term because Yusuke picked up on stuff. Even by episode thing, he still can't free throw for crap. He's probably the Shaquille O'Neal basketball. I was going to say Shiro, but that works too. No, I'm going to definitely, <laughs> definitely check it out. It's one of those you just like that... You get like certain members like... Uh, one dude only has eyes for the team manager, and she's aware of his affections, and yeah. at some point will return them. Yeah, but uh, right now she's like, "We we got a job to do. Calm down, child." <laughs> I love how everybody's goal oriented. It's like you know what? I have no time for women. <laughs> I'm, I'm about buckets. It's about getting buckets. Yeah, about, you wasn't in with you wasn't with me in the gym shooting them hoops. I, I need to. <laughs> Trying to I'm handle sorry. this business. It's like getting buckets. I'm sorry. No. It's in my mind, that's where it went. I'm sorry, Joe, what you're saying? I was going to say. No, I mean, look it up. It's a great thing. It's one of the classics. It's considered like one of the big three or one of the big four for sports anime. Because gotcha. you got like a uh, toss up between Ippo and Ashido no Joe for boxing. Mm -hmm. You have oh. Ace, uh, Ace of Diamond or Major for baseball. For football, you got Ice Shield 21, Friends of Tennis. Um, I, still, I still need more. You know what? Not to cut you off, but I wish the one anime that did continue that was boxing anime that you got me into, uh, Hajime Ippo. Hajime no Ippo? I, I want 
that if there was ever a boxing series that ever can did if it ever had a chance to continue, I want that series because man, I was so mad that I breezed through all those episodes on Crunchyroll and I was like, "How dare you? Well, they How dare you put out the whole series anime and cut me off." I'm sorry, Joey. Put out the whole thing. There's like 150 episodes of Epo. Yeah, they actually did because I can't say at a certain site that I can't mention because I like going there and I don't want it to get banned. Oh, okay, so you um, have seen the fighting, the rising, yeah, and the new challenge one. and new challenger, which Crunchyroll did eventually put new challenger on there. Um, but yeah, I I love that. That actually made me want to get back into boxing. It's been a while since I did boxing. That made me want to go back and to watch that anime. Um, but I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I'll give Slam Dunk a shot just because he's man about getting buckets. And like, you know, yep. you, you know, forget very women. Goal, it's about very getting buckets. <laughs> what do you say, Joe? I said very goal oriented series. I'm not mad about that. But, um, speak, but speaking of goals, what you got, Joe? Uh the other highlight. You and I have taken a trip where there are black suns and shadow moons and whole lots of violence and high body counts. Body count ain't even and a racism. Word. And body judgment. count. Body count ain't the word for that series. Go ahead, Joe. Go, go ahead. Go These hands are just rated R for ripping people in two. You ever, you ever want to see Kaijin? You ever want to see Kaijin and Common Riders just go head to head and, and just say F the body count? Black Sun is for you. <laughs> I've not, honestly not seen this high of a body count since probably Common Rider Kabuto. And that's the one where they get replaced by Invasion of the Body Snatcher mon- Monster. Yes. I, Chris, I'm oh, gonna say, uh, Chris, if so, you ever get a chance on Amazon Prime Video, watch, uh, yeah, watch the Black first Sun. three episodes of Common Rider Black Sun. The first so, three. This is the 30th anniversary project of Common Rider Black, which came mm-hmm. out in 1987. Uh, I don't know how it's the 30th anniversary, but you know, I mean, maybe this is the 25th anniversary. I don't know. Math ain't math. math. I'm Asian. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, so, wave at that. I'm gonna wave at that one as it passes me by. I'm not. I'm not yeah, I don't know how many me. times I've had people poke me. It's like you're Japanese. Do math. Ooh, I'm waving at I that one as it passes me by. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, so, anyways, no. So this is a retelling of the original Common Rider Black. Um, this is just a darker, more grittier reboot, which is kind of. Well, I guess a more modernization would be a better term. Yeah. Because original Kamen Rider got pretty dark pretty easily. If you look at Kuga, Kuga's body count far surpasses this one. But but five yeah. five gave a episode five gave it a run for its money. No, no, it didn't. <laughs> compared compared to the recent series, I mean, I could argue compared that to the way. more recent ones, yes. But if we're talking about Kamen Rider Kuga through. Okay, now Common that Rider, one I can argue. No, those series always had a body count. Yeah, those I can't argue with. Um, so. no, but this is a modern retelling. They are still in their mid forms most of the series. The giant grasshopper men. It's yeah. violent. It's wonderful storytelling, which some of it is a little very poignant for our time. Also, considering a lot of different movements involving racism and everything going on. So it's kind of pointed for what's going on right now in today's world. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, you know, with uh, giant bug, uh, giant bur- karate bug men on motorcycles. Although I've always, uh, that just makes me want to ride motorcycles all the more. But no, Chris, definitely do check out Black Sun because, it's my God. It's only episodes that are like 40 minutes a piece. But it is worth it. I'm going to be honest. for I Because it's, it's been a while since I watched anything Common Rider-wise. But to watch that, I was like, and Joe told me about it earlier today. I was like, "Oh crap, I haven't watched any episodes." And I said, "Well, <laughs> let me try to let me try to let me try to watch TV and work at the same time." I failed working miserably because after the first 10 minutes I was like, "Oh, I look over and next thing I know, I just said at the keyboard, my ear, my head was still turned in the general direction of the TV." I was like, "That's just I mean, the bird, dude, the guy as a bird did something that only birds can do with just no shame." I leave it at that you just look over it's like huh that grasshopper man is holding that spider-man's intestines on the outside yeah i mean it was just, that was a fatality that was straight fatality is what that was but definitely but definitely check it out when you get a chance um we did also want to mention um 
and forgive me, jo- forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, if you ever do watch this, I always want to say it. Oh, this dollars. one I got. She, so no this is the new creator, Yoshiyuki mm-hmm. Tomino. Uh, he was honored at the 71st Kanagawa Culture Award for uh, basically, hey, I created Gundam. Pretty much. I'm one yeah, of the reasons that. Japan in, Japan's economy is still afloat. Yeah, he is, he is, he is, he is, a, he is known, I bet it, Lee, as the godfather of Gundam. He is, that's what he's known for. It's like, without without him, we would have never had the original Gundam, Charles Cowboy. Without Cowardly. him, we Joe, wouldn't Joe, Joe, I've missed you. Huh? I said, Joe, I've missed you. Uh, yay. I mean, without him, Japan's plastic, uh, plastic model, uh, Toy sector would have just been nothing. Oh, you ain't you ain't lying about that. It's me Gundam. He is the reason. He really is. He is the reason. Like, yeah, I got I got people who just they that's all they get is those 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 Gundam models and spin. See, I knew Will was one of them. (laughs) I blame I blame Joe. I blame Joe for one. I know I blame Joe one time because because that is a Zoid, sir. Yeah, that is not a Gundam. No, that is no, a Zoid. No, you didn't let me finish because I said you peer pressured me into. You sat there and said I wouldn't. You sat there and said that I would get one. Okay, quick story. We were at a we were at a convention. Um, Joe was cosplaying. I was there taking my niece and nephews. Joe had pointed out that he had saw a particular Gundam a Gundam model set, and I was like, okay, cool. Keep in mind, I had already bought a crap load of stuff, and I told him that I'm not going to go back in there and go buy something else. Uh, one thing led to another. One of my uh, one of my nieces, one of my nephews wanted to go buy something. I go back in there. Said vendor looked at me and said, "Hey, would you be interested?" I was like, "No, it's a little too high for my blood." She goes half price. So I get a wing said, zero battle. Here's my for- debit card, madam. <laughs> I was like, I had a decision at that point because because at first it was priced like forty, let's just say forty five some change. She knocked it down to half, and so now I have a decision to make because I already purchased the doggone thing. But Joe is on the outside of the exit. There is no way I can avoid him, and and I think from a petty side of him, I think he was waiting for me. Like he's gonna come out with it, and he's gonna, he's not gonna deny it. So what did I do? Go straight out to him. And before he could say two words, yes, I bought it. Be quiet. <laughs> yes, I bought it. Be quiet. So look, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, look, when you see a deal, you don't pass the deal. You know? No, I, I mean, but 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 you're right though. I am one of those guys that does collect Gundam models. I love putting them together. Um, Gundams and Zoids, but Gundams have always been a near and dear thing in my heart just because my parents threw out my original ones. I never forgave my parents for that. But, um, that's, look, I just to be fair, had a therapy just moment on that fair. one. I never, you gave, never spend, gave my mom what, a 30 that. bucks. Uh huh. I convinced Shadow to drop 180 at Bob. You are a terrible influence. <laughs> you are terrible. But all I did you was see, go you... to BotCon. And notice one table selling nothing but Power Ranger weapons. And you know that man I, 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 look, look. I paid one hundred and fifty for Fantastic Four Fifty Two. No, no, no! I no, would no. proudly, proudly, great, no. proudly. Wait, 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 First wait, appearance, of Black man. Yeah, uh, I would pay that too. I got, I'm not gonna lie. I, I got, no. I got, a, I got in a deal. They found they somebody brought in the boxes at my local bookstore, mm-hmm. and they knew I was a big BP fan, mm-hmm. and they obviously did not know what they had in that box when they brought it in the store. So when they seen it, the first person they called was me. Nice. I'm like, uh, yes, yes. Uh, there's for those who who are listening or watching, that is the first appearance of Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I'll be yeah. damned. I will pass. That was my holy grail. And you found a graded one, a graded, yes. a graded issue with that. That's why I'm just like, and it was graded. I would have took that too. I'm with like, no I issues. have no what food. Say, so well, I was saying, now my pettiness extends to waking the man out of a dead sleep because it was on a Sunday. Oh, I remember so this I knew he worked out that <laughs> night. Show, uh, I was like, hey, they got Power Ranger weapons. What do they got? 
They got a they got a, a uh, chrono blaster. Da 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 da. All right, I'll be there tomorrow. Take a picture of it. See Send it petty. to him. Petty. Now, then asked the price and goes like, "Oh, all the weapons are twenty dollars." I hear him from my, the botcon on the wind, going, "God damn it!" <laughs> and then he comes in and blows one hundred and eighty dollars on the table <laughs> alone. See, you, you you do realize you are the catalyst to our consuming to our consuming spending. <laughs> You're the catalyst. You know that, but right? I am five five. I am a source, small source of evil, and but yet the potent source of evil, and yet the catalyst he's, behind he's, our. He's, he's, he said he's the small, the small catalyst. Look, I just know I'm the villain. Like when I bought that book, mm-hmm. first thing I thought of was like, I can keep this hidden, and my wife will never know until I tell her afterward. And you did what? But everything else was taken care of, and I've won the battle. <laughs> oh, oh, wise, oh, wise, sir! Please teach me thy ways. <laughs> Teach me it's that way, simple. sir. I, I will need this next year, so please teach me that way. <laughs> it's very simple. It's just he has an intricate series of doom bots to take the blame for him. <laughs> you wouldn't mention doom bots, but uh, uh, but, uh how but would no. you know that doom's my favorite villain? <laughs> oh God, we do have one all, last trailer. Always doom. Not kicking finger laser all day long. <laughs> We do have one last trailer, guys, for Trigun Stampede, because, yes, that is coming out. And, I'm, again, one of my first, well, second anime. I still don't know. Is first. this supposed to be a sequel, a retelling? It is a retelling of the original story. Okay. It is a retelling. And you'll, and you'll know what I mean once I play this trailer. Millions of Nibus. という名前は聞いたことあるかい第三都市ジュライそこに奴はいる。できれば争いたくはないんだけど、あの人たちは僕に優しくしてくれた。だから助けたい。死者になるのが夢だったんです。どんな理不尽にも絶対負けませんからね
as much as you hate greed, greed had some points, but that's a whole nother conversation. But um, but what did you guys think? What did you guys think of Trigun Stampede? Does it make you want to look forward to this, or is it just like uh more of a we'll wait and just render judgment later kind of thing? I'm one of I'm one of the ones where I'll I'll check it out. I'll check it out, you know. Okay. I'm always up for a uh, good anime anyway, and I did like Bash the Stampede, and um, I-, I like to see what they did with it. You know, even though it seems to, it looks like a like you said a retelling. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see what those differences are. You know, I mean, the animation isn't horrible or anything. It, it, it's just it looks. It's just it's a cleaner version, I guess you could say. I don't know. Yeah, Joe. I mean, I'll watch it. Uh... It wasn't my thing when it first appeared, but I'll give it a shot. If anything, if this succeeds, I really want them to do a re uh, reimagining or update of Outlaw Star. Outlaw um, Star is due for one. Outlaw ooh. Star is definitely due for one. And I'm going to say it now, which will cause violence. Outlaw Star was in every way, shape, and form better than Cowboy Bebop. This is true. Cowboy Bebop just had the better music. And this is also a true fact. Uh- <laughs> If you Why? if you marry if you marry them together, you would have the perfect combination. Ah, uh, Outlaw Star. Oh, this is gonna hurt me to say this. Outlaw Star did have the better story, even though mm-hmm. I, I, I love... had a better look at stuff. Like I had never heard of the spaceship series where they were actually worried about dock fees and gas and uh, refueling and re uh, upping their ammunition. It's just one of those. But Cowboy. But but to be fair, Cowboy Bebop did follow Spaghetti Western. It was a Spaghetti Western set out in space, so it was gonna definitely be different from Outlaw Star. But I mean, you're you're not wrong. Outlaw Star did have the better story, but Cowboy Bebop, I kind of felt like it it was gonna have a limited run, just like the Netflix version. Although they, you know, I still like Netflix. Kind of limited but... a little more of them. We yeah, yeah they, 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 they did they did it as best justice justice as they they could and I wasn't really disappointed. No, I, I actually I loved what what's his face playing what's his face playing Jim? John Cho? I was like, yes, yeah. I loved him as that. I was like, if that I was not- ready, I was ready. I'm like, look, you got the freaking intro together. Good lord. Yeah, <laughs> you let vicious be a character rather than a plot device. That would be nice. <laughs> it would have been nice, but. But no, Outlaw Star, I'll agree with you. That definitely needs that definitely needs either a, a continuance of the story or a retelling. Either way, you can't go wrong with Outlaw Star. Oh, uh, that's gonna be another sub that's gonna be another subject of topics. Animes that wish that we could bring back. Well, I mean, they did bring it back. It was called uh Firefly. Yes, it was. <laughs> Still too soon. Still nope, too soon. all you gotta do is just say the line from Falcon and Winter Soldier. No, I, not not that. I'm just saying. Every time, every time Fireflies bench, I'm like, still too soon. It has been 20 plus years. Still not for me. <laughs> still too. I quick. looked at that as like, oh, this is Outlaw Star, but without the cat girls and the samurai girls. <laughs> Ooh, Tinchi Muyo. <laughs> I almost forgot that. Thing. <laughs> Tinchi Muyo. Oh man, that that's gonna stick with me. But uh, with that being said, that's kind of all the news I got. Joe, anything else we got before we move on to comics? Uh, I mean, I'm playing Ghostbusters. I'm getting better at Ghostbusters Spirit Unleashed. How is it so far? Oh, I've, I'm almost at level 50. I got a level 36 pack and wand, a level 12 trap, and a level 16 PKE. So, you know, right. uh, you- being the ghost is the tougher one because everyone likes to play the Slimer class because... Mm-hmm. You can break out of tether streams easier. Ah, me? No, I'm playing the possessor class, so I can drop down giant spirit orbs and possess people. But it's also harder to get out of uh, proton streams. Gotcha. I can, see, I can see people playing the ghost as well. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and go into comics. So just let me know when you're ready to set up. Um, but beforehand, but before we do go into comics, I we do always want to shout out Rick's Comic City um, because they do support us here at the podcast. So if you ever get a chance, if you are in the Middle Tennessee area, check out all the three locations: uh, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, Clarksville, and of course 
Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They are voted the number one go-to place uh, in Nashville for common, so definitely check them out. If you are not in the Middle Tennessee area, you can still look them up online, as you can see right there, where they sell everything, including graded comics. I should know because I've picked up some wonderful comics, um, not only from this site, but also being there in person because, well, they, um, I mean, again, I'm still so happy about one Black Panther, but I'm not going to say how much I paid for it because somebody's listening and I'm not ready to have that conversation with them yet. But that being said, you can definitely find them out there. If you are not in the Nashville area, guys, uh, please support your local comic book stores, wherever they may be, and also your local libraries. Local libraries do carry the most up-to-date comics, manga, and anime, and animation. And yes, even in 2022, you can still get a library card, and you can read and watch to your heart's content. So support your local comic book stores, support your local libraries, because trust me, you're going to miss them when they're gone. Um, but, Joe, you ready for us, dude? Yep. All right. All yours, man. All right. So we got uh, Flash 787. It <laughs> is written by Jeremy Adams with pencils by Fernando Brasarin. Uh Inker is Matt Ryan. Colorist is Jeremy Cox. And letter is Rob Lee. Uh, this is a filler issue uh, because it's taking place after Dark Crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, which the larger community is ignoring because acts is the better crisis event. <laughs> uh, but this is just a fun episode because Wally gets accidentally stuck in intergalactic professional wrestling. That was still funny. <laughs> uh, he mistakes it for an alien invasion, and it turns out, uh, no, there is no invasion. Um, this is literally Earth has just become an episode of intergalactic pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, he fights someone who looks way too suspiciously, like, um, it can, uh, you know, it, exactly either way. It could be Winter Macho Soldier in the Seinfeld poofy shirt. Oh, initially who was fighting? Okay, never mind. <laughs> and then a combination <laughs> of Macho Man and Rick Rude, but Purple come down I, and they fight. I read that whole thing in his voice, just the whole yeah. time. Which just, one, Rick Rude or Macho Man? I read it. I read it in Macho Man's voice. I can only hear Macho Man's voice. You know something, Barry? We all go through problems in life. You just gotta find and a way to. The cream make rises fun. to the top. <laughs> I and mean, like, well, I was like, I'm gonna fight all of you until you leave, and he's like, No, 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 no. We we are like this is like a legit thing. Mm -hmm. It's sponsored. Uh, no one's in immediate danger. We've moved all the civilians out of the way. All damage is going to be repaired by our repair bots once we're done. Yeah. It's like a fully legit thing in the flash. Like, oh, this is cool. No, I'm, I'm totally down. Because Wally would be cool with this. And I you can see people across the DC universe watch Wally participate in professional wrestling. As you see in the background, him suplexing and Stone Cold stunning people. <laughs> you can get a quick thing that... Uh, from Nightwing, where Babs and Dick are just sitting there eating popcorn, it's like, should should we help him? No, he's fine. Nah. <laughs> the Dick Grace, Grayson does what he does best. He's like, ah, Barry's got it. I, I, it's like, it's, oh, he's got it. It's, and Linda it's, and his kids are watching there, cheering him on. It's just a fun issue. Like, yeah, I have not had this much fun reading Flash in a bit because we've been trying to like save Barry for the past several months. Yeah, and this was quite the refresh we needed. And plus, Jeremy Adams is uh, writing a really fun Wally West uh, story, which is so refreshing from what he Future Edge was going to be because no one liked Future uh, Future State Flash at all. No, but this so but terrible. But it's here, Macho Man. You got to come back and bend. we got to defend the titles. He's like, we, we he's like, we'll be back because we have the to, to defend. The yes. other interesting thing we noticed about this is that Maul from Wildcats teleported in at one point. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's heralding thing because Wildcats is supposed to be coming out. So I'm wondering if other comics are dropping in Wildcat characters and saying like, no, they're around. I will still cosplay as Grifter if I ever get the courage to actually do cosplay. I will cosplay as Grifter. <clears throat> and he is by far my favorite character on Wildcat. Do it. I have to I have to find this little thing called courage, sir. Do it. 
<laughs> Come I'm, to the dark side. <laughs> well, no, if I do that, I've already got I've already got it. it. <laughs> yeah, I know mean, we do got cookies on the dark side. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, you're good. We have cookies and everything on the dark side. Yes. <laughs> So moving on over. I couldn't even do it without Target Book number eight, uh, written by Tom King, drawn by Greg Smallwood. Uh, the long and short of this one, without spoiling too much, is Rocket Red is trying to find out what happened to uh, Guy Gardner and uh, just continuously uh, knocks mm -hmm. Chance in and out of conscious mm -hmm. states, just asking, like, where's Guy? Where's Guy? Mm -hmm. Where's Guy? Mm hmm. He gets his answer, although we know what happened to Guy previously. But again, Guy had the this version of Guy had it coming to what happened to him. Still though. But this is just all dealing with like Rocket Red. <laughs> I'm just I'm just tripping back. He beat his tail until he's like, oh, I apologize. Have vodka. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we have vodka. vodka. Fixes everything. <laughs> he's, he said, "Don't you all, don't you all drink vodka? No, we drink water. Vodka only good for funerals, birthdays, and ceremonies." <laughs> and fucking, he, he's like, after beating him, after literally beating him for two days straight, I apologize. Here, special bottle. I was like, and I, I know it's a terrible it's Russian, it's a terrible word. Russian accent, but that's the no, way my mind I found it. But no, it's just it, it was a good. No, it, was you, good. It, it was good enough to where I'm pretty sure you're going to be drafted into the army. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I've seen Spet. I've seen the Spetsnaz. I'm good. <laughs> I've seen what those guys train. Again, nah. Human Turtle seems to be a wonderful <laughs> comic. Um, I'm looking forward to see how this ends. I don't know good. how it's going to end. Well, I think I think. Well, no, let me keep that theory to myself till later. It's more than likely Captain Adam because it's always Captain Adam. Yeah, because they're not going to kill off Chance. Let's just be honest. No. Chance is not going to get killed off. This is the highlight: the new Star Trek. This so should have been written by season. Colin Kelly and Jet and Jackson Lanzig, art by uh, Ramon Rosanis, and colors by Lee Lowridge with lettering by uh, Clayton Cows. So this is the canonical sequel to it should the Space Nine. It should be a TV series. This happens three years after the end of Deep Space Nine, where the prophets bring Cisco back. Mm -hmm. We learn that in the intermeaning time, Cisco had a daughter and is commanding a new ship called the Theseus, which has kind of an all-star cast. Yeah. Of who's who, including the two new characters, Talur, and I forget what the Andromedans name is but he gets data as his first officer beverly as his science uh, as his medical, his medical officer, doctor tom paris as his helmsman scotty apparently they cured for whatever was keeping him in the transporter buffer mm -hmm. is the ship designer of the theseus and the engine core uh in the engine room just uh, guy just know when I say she's going to blow, I mean it. <laughs> yeah, she pretty much says, like, I know the ship in and out. When I say we need to dump the warp core, we dump we the, warp dump core. the warp core. <laughs> so Cisco is also dealing with uh, the intermediate voices of the prophets in his head. Uh, and it's just, I love this book so much because Cisco is my captain. I mean, well, he did, he did stare down the dominion with no shields and no weapons. So, huh? I mean, he did stare down the dominion with no shields, no weapons, and said, "Step up if you want to." I mean, even to the thing Jake says, he was uh, Starfleet considers him the Machiavelli of uh, the Dominion Wars. Yeah, Machiavellian war hero of the Dominion Wars, which <laughs> I think it's kind of funny considering the fact that you know technically Garrett Garen will Garris will never get his his just due. He never will. That man single-handedly saved you. That man single-handedly saved DS9, and he will never get his just desserts. I mean, I just really like this book. Like, if you guys ever see me out in public not in costume, I wear a D DS Niners baseball cap that is so freaking sunbleached from how often I wear it. That was a pure Navy baseball cap. At one point, actually, for it was a pure navy baseball cap a year ago. 
Yeah. And that thing is so sun bleached now. See. It's slowly becoming khaki. Oh, but it's still doable. But still, I like but I like the fact that they are they are continuing the pro the profit story and the fact that Cisco is now fighting a new threat to the profits. Because at first there, I mean, at first it was kind of a rehash, I want to say, of season five, where the profits were being attacked by the uh crap. What was that race that was called? They yeah. basically wanted to kick them out of the temple, and I forgot yeah. the name of the race. Um, and that's what made me think about that. The prophets were all like, "Okay, well, we're going to send their emissary there," and now you find out it's a whole new, uh, it's a whole new threat that basically destroys the prophets. But again, this is the kind of thing I wish was a TV show. I mean, don't get me wrong, love it as a book, but this should have been a effing show. That's all I'm saying. Well, so whether, one problem is the guy that does Cisco doesn't want to ever do Cisco ever again. Yeah, he been yeah. I can't I can't be mad at him. I mean we're I mean we're getting a final Picard season with a with a lot of the with a lot of fan favorites on there, but that's Jean Luc's path ride too. Maybe yeah. we're gonna be getting yeah. a Riker series. Supposedly not confirmed. I hope they do. I really hope we do get a William Riker series. So the other thing I will say about this book is I really want these uniforms. Like I want, I gotta ask, I gotta ask her if she'll make me this uniform. Nice. So that's so that's post. Uh, so that's post Dominion War. A little bit before Discovery. That no, no, that's wrong. No, because Picard is still a captain in this series. Remember, he goes to him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's, he's not his first captain. contact uniform. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's all I was trying to think of. I, I was getting my genres mixed up. But like but, the uniforms they have in this episode in this issue or for the Theseus uniforms, mm -hmm. I want to wear one of these. But still, to have Montgomery Scott as your chief engineer, it's like <laughs> it's like you have to listen to me, Captain. I told you once I I told Kirk like I tell Picard. They never <laughs> they to... never listen to the engineers. It's like this is my ride. You're just sitting in the in the seat. You know, well, the other thing I oh, no, like no, no, about no. this yes. is that he is the captain of the ship of Theseus, mm -hmm. and Cisco is quite possibly also a physical version of a ship of Theseus. Yeah, and if Cisco is destroyed and prop and the prophets rebuild him, is he still Cisco? I see what you did there. I see what you did. Well, technically, he did, it, it, he did a whole vision thing right there. He just did the. He did well. Technically, technically, that could be the post question right now. I mean, he was yes, accepted he by the prophets, and he was returned. Could he be? Could he literally be the prophet's emissary, or he is he the original? While on the ship of Theseus. Thanks, Joe. That's gonna stick in my head for a while. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Thanks for that wonderful paradox question, Joe. That's gonna stick in my head. It's like how did, how did Vision say it? What is what is a ship if it's not without wood or something like that? I'm like, yeah. Don't do this. It's, still, it's like, like if, you, if you play, if you take all the wood, if you take all the wood off the ship and replace with new wood, is it still the ship of Theseus or is it another ship? Yeah. Does the name still imply, or is it organic? He's like, I'm like, he he's kind of not wrong. It's like that. See, this 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 kind of leads to another <laughs> comic that Joe's going to talk about very soon, where it's a certain war games to it. But I'm gonna wait till he gets there because that's what I'm kind of I'm kind of mad about one of the one of the pulls he did. I was like, I was reading and I was going, they war gamed him. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so coming up next, we got She Hulk number seven. This is written by Rainbow Raul, uh, art by Luca Marsica, colors by Rico Renzini, and letters by uh, Joe Carmagna. Um, so, uh, Jack of Hearts became the most luckiest man in Marvel. <laughs> More ways than one, huh? <laughs> Jeffrey, what Jennifer didn't just smash Matt. <laughs> Jennifer, you know, smash she, uh, he also Let's got face it, we all want to die by the art of snoo snoo. What's, what's wrong with that? No <laughs> argument there. Go ahead. Uh, he also <laughs> back at the same time. <laughs> uh, the long and short of this one is aside from the romance stuff, we get a um Doombot that actually is sentient to a degree because he is um. Helping Victor Mancha, who is the nephew 
uh, Vision's nephew and yeah. Ultron, one of Ultron's kids, mm, who has yeah. teamed up with a Doombot that has become sentient, but also good because he wants to pay for the crimes he committed. Uh, but as asks for a defense as attorney. As do, as, I'm doomed. Do you see the problem? <laughs> it's like, it's like, do you see the problem with the client? <laughs> but the reason she's taking this case is because this is a favor to Andy, the unstoppable, or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever Andy's moniker is. Because even she's like, but it's doomed. And then he just holds up a chalkboard. He's not a bad guy. <laughs> He means it. He means it so much. He, he means well. <laughs> oh man! So after she takes the case, uh, she runs into the um, Alice in Wonderland quoting uh, yeah. Hulk level dude, mm-hmm. and then the issue just kind of ends there. The series continues to be fantastic. I love this version of She Hulk. The romance subplot is fine. I'm there for it because it's She Hulk. I always enjoy that. Uh, the comedy is there. Uh, not so much fourth wall breaking, but I don't think that's what this series is about. This is more not, about the, com- this yeah, is more not, about not, the comedy not, and the romance. Mm-hmm. Which, for her, that's fantastic. It fits. And that's yeah. what I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about She-Hulk. Even the series, even the television shows, like yes, it, she's always been the comedic version. Like, it's always been the fourth wall breaking. It's always been the comedy. It's all... Unless she's in an Avengers book, and when then right. she's, you know, that's totally we don't talk story. about the Jason Aaron run here. He's banned. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that's the only time. But like in her own stuff, in her own mm-hmm. in her solo series, yeah, it's it is it is Ally McBeal, yeah, <laughs> with with a Hulk. That's what it is. It's oh, fun. Yeah. I, I completely I agree. Back. We do talk about the time mm-hmm. that Conchu took over the Earth only because we get to see him totally own Thor. I got the hammer. I have mil. I have. I have millionaire. Whatever. I have the hammer. <laughs> oh no! It's the one where you like tells uh, Thor. It's like, well, yeah, you control the hammer, but your hammer's made of Uru metal. Mm-hmm. You don't know what that is, do you? It's, like, it's made of moon rocks. It's and from moon rock, right? I own. Hence. I'm the god of the moon. I'm the fist for the god of moon. Meaning, uh, millionaire, one eighty for me, please. Thank you. I still laugh at the fact that can you know you know but you know can can Conchu lift millionaire and I'm like okay I'm gonna give you a comic with a page read this then come back <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, I would I'm going to educate you <laughs> so I would think probably not due to the enchantment of Odin mm-hmm. because Odin is also probably got equal to that of Mion of uh, in power. But were it not enchanted, then absolutely. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. People always argue that, but but no, I just love I just love that scene where Conchu's like, I he's trying to pronounce millionaire and it doesn't go well. He says, "Screw it, I'm holding the big hammer. I just got the big hammer." Oh man! And but, I love this. Uh, and then rounding it out, we do got one man. special one, but I was only making it weird because I want that comic to succeed. But uh, mm-hmm. finale of Acts uh, Judgment Day, uh, issue six. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is written by Karen Gillian with art by Valerio uh, Sheedy and Ivan Ferrelli. Uh, colors by Marty Garcia and lettering by Clayton Cows. So this is the finale of Acts. Uh, if you are a reader of Karen Gillian and expecting this to end in a punch, I'm sorry. Karen Gillian likes to use their words in their book, not their mm-hmm. fists. Mm-hmm. Not to say there aren't cool moments. My favorite moment in this is where Jean Grey uh, pulls a Psylocke. Yep. And also demonstrates she's been living a very happy, open relationship with Wolverine and Scott by people wondering, it's like, She's acting a whole lot of Scott, but she also uses the totality of her psychic powers as a physical weapon and its Wolverine claws. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's pulling the Psylocke. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of stuff happens. Like, this is actually considered quite a bit of a crisis. Uh, the, I would actually say this is yeah. the first time Marvel's had a yeah. crisis since uh, Secret, uh, the. 
most current ver- iteration of Secret Wars. Secret Wars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's um, some there's some realizations that happen in this one that you're, you're that, you don't, that you don't that you don't get that you, that you don't see coming really, right? No, you don't. Uh, mm-hmm. The rise of uh, the Phoenix Foundation, mm-hmm. which Sebastian mm-hmm. Shaw is like, yeah, there's no way in the world they're gonna ever hate this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the normal humans cannot hate the what we're doing mm-hmm. on this one, but the whole reason the Phoenix Foundation is because Gene's like. Oh, I failed, and I understand the reason I failed. Mm-hmm. I got the thumbs down. So, uh, yeah, we're going to break taboo, and the Phoenix Foundation is going to be formed. Now, what the Phoenix Foundation is, I won't spoil that. Go read the book. But you also got a whole other thing. Like, Eros is uh, not really <laughs> thrilled with how he's treated right now because, you know, Eros is uh, the god of love, uh, the immortal of love, and likes being loved and likes having people love him. And, Gets a nice clap on the back from uh, Night Girl going, you'll get used to this. You'll get used to this. I won't spoil the ending anyway. This was, a good, this was a good, this was a good, this was a good arc. This was a good arc. Just yeah. was I good. want this, when it releases in trade, mm-hmm. I want this to be as big as uh, Hawks and Pox and Ten of Swords. To where it's all in chronological order. I don't want to go and find five or six trades to make the whole thing. I want mm-hmm. them to make it just a big like soft, a compendium uh, or something. Yeah. Yes. Compendium and just put it all out in chronological order. That way you can see everything. I want to see Captain Marvel's uh issue of Axe because it just deals with Chewie. Yep. What not, but what made you mad, Will? I can't say it because I don't want to spoil it. The how it ended. I can't oh. say how it ended. Because it didn't end with a punch? No, because they literally, I figured the only way they could be, the only way that he could be beat was from a certain movie at a certain time with a certain being that I cannot say. Because I've already told you this before we start recording. Yeah. The other That's thing that was, they're dealing with is like, Tony's got a huge head because he passed, and Captain was like, "Well, yeah, he passed you. He's mm-hmm. built off of you." Mm-hmm. He's like, "Well, I mean, one of us failed, Steve, and one of us passed." And Steve's like, "Yeah, that's not how this works, Tony." He's like, "I still let Doctor Doom is still my favorite. Admit, admit to me now that Reed Richards is smarter than you, and you will pass." <laughs> And Doom turned wasn't that the, and wasn't that the good punch? <laughs> and Doom oh, turned put and all your pride and to the side. The thumbs up. That that part to me will forever be funny. And in, in Judgment Day, where Progenitor just goes up to Doom, if you admit now that Reed Richards is smarter than you, I will pass you. <laughs> it just walks off. He's like, he's he's assured of himself. And I love Doom. And it was just like that was the moment. <laughs> just like. You know he just suns you right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, the yeah. better Doom moment still comes from this year's Hellfire Gala, where Doom has to consider if David Bowie was actually uh, yes, where well, um, David Bowie is not. actually a mutant. He says, "He says, was he? No, <laughs> but he could be. I mean, it's it's up there with it's up there with literally being sent to hell, beating the crap out of Mephisto." To the point to where death is like, send him back. <laughs> it's, it's like how it's like that just shows your level. You beat the crap out of Mephisto in hell just for death to send you back. Yeah, but no, Damn. this is like I said earlier. This is probably one of the most large scale events the Marvel Universe has had in a while. Like, yeah. What they can do with several things can probably have stories for maybe another good five or six years out of this event alone. Uh, this also made the Eternals much more appealing to people, mm-hmm. which, I mean, you know, I'm going to say it, the movie was mid, but it definitely did not help uh, put the Eternals in the eyes of the public. Right. Uh, I, I mean, certain people just are not coming back after this book. Yeah, I mean, they, the thing about it is, will the read, you know, some readers will they be okay with it or will they riot? 
Some people Monday most Friday. definitely will because Fall of X is going to be happening next year. So some yeah. people will be coming back. That yeah. one, that one, I'm just like, can they catch a break? They had a school. They had an island. They had a freaking <laughs> asteroid. Now they have a planet. You won't leave them alone. No. Nope. It, it's 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 like Hollywood for comic books. So it's like how else can we mess out? How, how how much more can we mess with them? Let me count the ways. We can do like, another this, this like a whole other planet. They're like, we don't want. Look, you're welcome to come in. We'll show you we mean no harm. But mm-hmm. please stay the hell off our lawn when we ain't bothering you. We done saved Wait, your but. ass millions of times, and you still stop messing with the mutants, please. <laughs> Jeez, oh, this is my call. This is my call for the mutants. Leave them alone. Look at look at the look at Queen Regent Storm up there. Mm-hmm. Which no matter what suit she's wearing, fire. She's like Angela yep. Bassett slash Cheryl Lee Ralph slash I don't know Rihanna. I don't know. She just she nails every look she has. Pretty much. <laughs> Y'all keep tearing some keep stuff away away from them. <laughs> Oh, Which, by man. the way, speaking of mutants and famous actresses that played them, hats off to Kiki Palmer for actually cut, uh, being rogue for Halloween. That was the well done. That was very well done. I was I, giving I, that. It was actually really well done. For yeah. the- <laughs> she nailed that no, shit. I mean, she wasn't she in the New Island pose, yeah. but you know, we give her props. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. So I'm not gonna. I can't believe so many people. Admit, well, Rogue doesn't. Rogue doesn't have laser eyes. Okay, that 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 that's your gripe. Nope, that's <laughs> wrong. Rogue can have laser that's eyes. Touch of Scott. I was like, yeah. that's your that's gripe. That's the only thing she. The only thing it's like y'all just couldn't assume she absorbed somebody's power that had laser eyes and just decided to just use them right there. It's like y'all guys, you just can't. You just can't be happy, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right? It's like just be happy because I know we're just trying to get the right storm right now. Like, look, we got people who's actually portraying characters quite well, actually. And you're griping about the laser eyes. I mean, I I mean, it's all of a bitch. (laughs) Yeah, I am looking forward to the next event because the next X Men event is going to be Dark Web. Yeah, Uh, (laughs) Ben Riley and whatnot. And then after that, I'm canceling the Smiley. Spider Man, because that book is just atrocious and the art is shit. <laughs> well, um, uh, Slot's back hey. on that book, right? No, Slot has his own Spider Man book, which is currently going uh, on um, Spider Geddon. Uh, okay, it is still okay. uh, and Ben Riley just can't catch Jeff a break. Will and Donald <laughs> Jr. Chasm. <laughs> <laughs> That guy can't catch a break for nothing. Well, oh I Jesus. still say they had to go with Chasm because, unfortunately, they wasted Ghost Spider on Spider Gwen. Yeah. And Let's Ghost Spider it. kind of fits with what uh, Ben is right now, anyways. It's still funny. I just can't. It's just like fucking with Ben. Things. He's another one. Stop messing with Ben Riley. Like well, when he had the hoodie, when he was a Scarlet yeah. Spider, that was probably to me personally. That was probably his best look. His yeah. best look. And y'all and just keep the, fucking with his, uh, his and then the, and then the uh, Peter Corporation, and then it's just like, oh yeah, we're just basically gonna just transfer your memories into him, and uh, yeah, have fun with that little mental trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like, that man not... can't get the break. He's still my favorite Spider Man, but he and Madeline Pryor are gonna be teaming up to mess with Spider Man and the X Men, and mm-hmm. Venom's gonna be involved, and Captain and Ms. Marvel's gonna be involved. I'm looking forward to that event. I think it'll be fun. Uh, after that, I am definitely canceling the ma- my hold on Amazing Spider-Man because that book is atrocious. The oh, art man. I can't look at directly. I have to look at it from like a skewed angle because of how bad it is. Damn. I, I am just in that camp of John Romita Jr. cannot draw people that don't look like Legos. No, fair point. I can't argue that. Well, thank you, Joe, for the call. We got one more. Oh, uh, you got one more? My bad. Go ahead. We got one more, and this is just kind of a quick thing because... Uh, this is Tiger Division number one. This is a uh, theme book. These are all Korean superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Okay. Uh, written entire, uh, by almost an entirely Asian staff and whatnot. Um, 
So we have all of our things. We have Luna Snow, who's a K-pop idol. Uh, Taiguki, which he's pretty much a Superman. Okay. He looks like he's in his 20s, but he was a baby in the 1950s. Uh, Lady Bright, who is a terror, uh, playing card fortune teller. White Fox, who is their director, who's also a shapeshifter. Gunner 2, who's just classified as sassy robot. Okay. Uh, the general, who's a living totem of the spirit of Korea. I was going to say he looks like the Iron Giant from that direction, but go I was going to say, yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, where's this other dude? Uh, Street and Mr. Enigma, who's basically a Korean demigod. Okay. I mean, this is the first issue. It sets up stuff. Uh, I clued in here again because of uh, all Asian representation team, you know, they these guys got originally made by Jim McKay. Uh, the writer who's taking them over is Emily Kim, who did uh, the Silk series. Okay. Art is by Chris Lee. Coloring is by Yen Yen Nitro and Arania Mahler. Um, I mean, this is a very basic introduction to every character and whatnot. We get uh, Maguki's uh, origin story and just some stuff involving Kim. Um. I don't think I'm going to be keeping up with this, but I do want to put it out there for those that are looking for more Oriental representation in comics. I mean, yeah, we're out there a whole bunch, but this is like a whole team of South Korean people. So more representation matters, guys. Definitely. So I just added that just for, uh, you know, put it out there. I'm sure we'll see them in something. Uh, hopefully this lasts a good bit. At least probably 12 issues is what I would like. Just so they I can get at least two trains out of it. Like Iron Giant. That's just going to stick with me. He looks like the Iron Giant. That's just going to stick with me. But anyway, thank you, Joe, for that. Um, as we wrap it up, guys, again, thank you all for who watched, who liked, who commented. Again, I apologize. The comments were coming a little bit in. Uh, thank you, Chris, uh, Chris, for jumping on, dude. Um, which again, because you are you are an impromptu guest, sir. Uh, you want those people what you're doing because I know about Blurred's Eye View as far as the website, sir. But I think you can tell it better than me. All right. So this is your man up north, Chris Fury, the man on the wall from Blurred's Eye View. Uh, we are currently on break. We'll be back November 15th, but you can check out past episodes on the YouTube channel, Blurs Eye View Podcast. You can also listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also check us out on Opulence Radio, iHeart Radio, and much more. Uh, go to BlursEyeView.org. That's the website. So we'll be uh, Will, who also works with me on this website. We are giving you news updates on wrestling, news for comics, movies, television, and so much more. Uh, check us out. Be a fan, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Also, Fury's reacts and reviews strictly for the YouTube channel. Uh, Tuesdays, 8 30 p.m., Thursdays, 9 p.m., but that's when we come back. So, until then, you can always catch all the past episodes, like I said before. So, thank you for having me on. Uh, you know, you are more than always more than welcome to jump on with us and me and Joe. Um, so definitely, definitely, um, the door is always open for you to jump on. And, and always say, I always say, when people put the signal out, I just boom. <laughs> yeah, because J- Joe mafia you. So that's why I was like, Joe has the mafia suit. So I'm gonna start having him whenever I go for car dealerships to go with me. Just put on the suit and don't say nothing. Just put on the suit, don't say nothing. Look menacing. That's all. You I mean that to little do. guy in the Simpsons? Like, but Marge, I want to see what the little guy does. You're basically. <laughs> You are the little, you are the little guy that does something awesome when nobody's paying attention. That is perfect. <laughs> but but Joe, what do you got going on this week, man? As far as streaming and everything else going on, Uh trying to survive. Damn. Now, uh, I will be seeing Black Panther probably twice in the week. Mm-hmm. Next week, I am seeing it with friends and whatnot <laughs> on Wednesday for the early screener. Uh, Tony and I will be uh, over at uh, the Smyrna Malco with Dad by Cosplay. We'll be out there for a bit. Um, what else do I got doing? 
making Ghostbuster equipment for myself because I don't have a PKE and I'm just going to like homebrew a PKE of my own design. I was going to say a multimeter. Well, that's a whole other story. I was going to say a multimeter with a, with a metal detector, but that's one of the designs I saw. No, I looked at that and those are like two to $300 now for some reason. No, just get an $8 one from Harbor Freight and then, set, and then attach two and then attach uh, two metal rods to it. Save like 10 bucks. Oh, I went the even cheaper route. You're going to go cheaper than Harbor Freight? Yeah, I went to Amazon <laughs> for $4.95 for <laughs> and got a camera handle and I'm going to jury rig something. Ah, I was going to say, I'm about to say, you're kind of hard to beat on the Harbor Freight side of the game. Right. <laughs> I'm about to say, 100 bucks in Harbor Freight, you walk out with at least three cartloads. Well, as far as uh, gaming goes, every so often, uh, the Ghostbuster Tennessee Ghostbusters and I are hopping on and playing Ghostbusters together. Uh, I'm a terrible, terrible ghost, but I'm an adequate Ghostbuster. As you should be. Well, I mean, playing the Slimer class is easy mode because that thing can get out of tether streams like with no difficulty at all. Well, it's kind of like playing. Uh, I don't play that class. I play the Possessor class, which mm. lets you basically spirit bomb uh, them or. So you're basically. So you choose violence. You choose violence and. Oh, I choose aggressive violence. That's what you I choose. choose, you choose I, violence. I choose to make a literal ah, spirit bomb ooh, that pulses uh, <laughs> dark energy then explodes with slime. See, I can uh, see, and then I get to possess normal people when they're frightened. See, you choose violence, but um, yeah. Other than that, that cool. one more thing, one more thing. I didn't forget, I didn't forget something. I don't know. What's I got to get that whole world. I get. So everybody who are who's watching and or listening, uh, or will be listening, if you go to Blurred's Eye View on. IG, you'll find the link tree in the bio. It'll send you to all those social sites. It'll send you to all those uh, podcasting sites that we are on, including the YouTube and the Facebook channel. Uh, and that's that's my spiel. <laughs> no problem. But what are you gonna say, Joe? Uh, other than that, I'm just waiting for the new Pokemon stuff to come out and the seventy dollar version of Card Fight Vanguard. So I got to pay seventy dollars to. Get all the cards I already own and work for them all over again to play online. Damn. But, but I mean, uh, I'll probably actually stream that because it's got a Steam version. So, you know. And that's, I mean, probably so. But for all those that want to know to follow Joe, you can definitely find him on Twitch at Joe Italian Last Name. Of course, his YouTube channel, Total Justice Gaming. Um, as he does have a new intro of music, I definitely dig it. He actually, uh, did interview Ty from House of Cards uh, last week, so definitely check that out. That is available on GitBit as well as Total Justice Gaming. Check those areas out as well. Uh, some other shameless promotions that we have before we do wrap this up, guys. Shout out to my buddy at Big BZA Dot who supports us. Uh, definitely check him out on all socials as he usually does his TikToks, and he is back to making beats as a producer, so definitely check him out there. Um, as far as yours truly, guys, you can find me, Blackbox447. Uh, just about every uh, social there is out there, guys. I usually post everything that I watch, play, um, and judge, and do sometimes gym stuff because I do a couple push-ups. Um, at the same time, guys, like I said, like, follow, share. The link at the bottom that you see that's tracking along there. Let me make that just a little bit bigger for everybody to follow. Um, if you copy and paste that link into the browser, it'll take you to our link tree that has the YouTube, Facebook, and um and Twitch, yes, Twitch groups, to where you can like, you can share, you can follow everything that we do. So definitely like, share, subscribe, let us know what you think. Pass along your comments, pass along your views. Um, yes, I am still going to talk about, uh, literally and figuratively, the uh, most disrespectful ass whoopings. I want to have it done for 2022. I want to make this an annual thing. Uh, um, as long as I get the logistics of everybody that's going to be in it and then explain the rules, we will have that going along, and I myself cannot wait to see. And as Joe put it so eloquently, <laughs> we're not going to make any money off that off that particular series because we will probably be playing some clips, and I'm pretty sure the DMCA folks will be looking for it. So, uh, what did you got, Joe? Did you uh, got one more thing before you call it night, sir? Well, I got. We can play the theme music for the intro for the outro. Uh, oh yeah. So all those that don't know, Joe has this, and uh, Joe, you got press play for me, sir.
Cool. I do like the fact that you are definitely a Final Fight fan. But that's cool. But uh, but that being said, uh, like I said before, guys, um, we do thank you all for watching. We will be back here next Friday. Um, all of us in this, all of us on this chat will more than likely have seen Black Panther. Um, Chris, if you are free uh, this same time Friday night um, at 8.30 usually is when we run. I'll check with you in case you want to hop yeah. on. Um, we do have it, a rule. You're talking about if it's, if it's for, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, let's see because, you know, Black I'll, Panther. I'll, I'll, it's probably, yeah, it's getting it. quite a few viewings from me. Yeah. <laughs> that gets all my money. Oh, I'm the yeah. bitch this time. And and usually, like I said, guys, when the first week of a movie comes out, we only give impressions. We give impressions. We do not give spoilers. We do not give details. Only impressions. The rule here at GitBit is when something is out brand new, it has to be a week before we give spoilers because, hey, you've had seven days. What's your excuse? Um, mm -hmm. But with that being said, guys, we will be back here uh, next Friday. Same GitBit time, same GitBit channel. Um, of course, Joe, any last words, sir, before we call tonight? No, I'm good. <laughs> Straight to the point. Uh, Chris, anything from you, sir? November 15th, we'll be returning. And uh, chances are we will be spoiling Black Panther, which means you still have a week's time. Yep. Don't play with I, me. I can't wait for Kira. I can't wait for Apothecary Kira's response. I'll be oh, sitting there. Kira. I will be sitting there in the comments. You know what? That'll probably be the one day I'll ask you, can I jump on there just to mess with her? <laughs> <laughs> On there just specifically to mess with Kira about that. But anyway, Kira, so for those who don't know, Pop the King, that's that's not what we call her. That's not what we call her. Call her. Wine call her has, and when when Kira has that that blood red wine, mm -hmm. shit's going down. Uh shout, <laughs> shout out to shout out to room full of blurs, Kira. I I I do love you, but you know I am going to mess with you just because <laughs> just because you came from Black Adam. Now I'm gonna have to come for you on Black Panther. So is this a shadow crystal thing that I should be aware of? Yes. <laughs> oh well then I'm automatically on her side and you're on your own. <laughs> I'm always am. That's why that's why I roll with the stars. But anyway, <laughs> that's gonna do it for this podcast, guys. Thank you all for watching. Again, take care of yourselves and each other, and we will all get through this. Have a wonderful weekend. Please feel free to set your clocks back because I cannot wait to get out of daylight savings time. Again, guys, he's been Chris. I've, he's been Chris. That's been Joe. I've been Will. This has been Give It Podcast. Thank you all for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Remember, having his people. <laughs>